me and she brew ya. White people, he brew now. If you didn't know, you do now. <laughs> you belong to me. Yeah. All right. Uh. This nigga's bonkers. From the same city as the Knickerbockers. Name ring bells from here to Yonkers. Or Nicaragua. You niggas too thirsty, you need some agua. I ain't talking Fina. When they kill my dog, I ain't hear shit for Peta. These niggas talk Kent, but they really mean FEMA. Kevin cut the Zag, got my stripes, then Adidas. If you ain't a bad bitch, then get the fuck off my penis. One, two step with a meat tree drip. Keep my circle tighter than my meat tree is. If I don't fuck with you, you a piece of shit. When I dip, you dip, we dip, we dip. This type of shit that I sing to my bitch. No six nine, we don't sing no snitch. Gotta love that bass. Social distance, I love my space. Tell Karen, get the fuck out my face. We ain't never switching up on our race. You belong. To me, it's you, baby. One more time. Uh, gotta love that bass. Social distance, I love my space. Tell Karen, get the fuck out my face. Me and the yeah. All right. Uh, this nigga's bonkers. From the same city as the Knickerbockers. Name ring bells from here to Yonkers. Or Nicaragua. You niggas too thirsty, you need some agua. I ain't talking Fina. When they kill my dog, I ain't hear shit for Peter. These niggas talk Kent, but they really mean FEMA. Kevin cut the Zag, got my stripes, then Adidas. If you ain't a bad bitch, then get the fuck off my penis. One, two step with a meat tree drip. Keep my circle tighter than my meat tree is. If I don't fuck with you, you a piece of shit. When I dip, you dip, we dip, we dip. This type of shit that I sing to my bitch. No six nine, we don't sing no snitch. Gotta love that bass. Social distance, I love my space. Tell Karen, get the fuck out my face. We ain't never switching up on our race. You belong. To me, it's you, baby. One more time. Uh, gotta love that bass. Social distance, I love my space. Tell Karen, get the fuck out my face. We ain't never switching up on our race, cause you belong to me. One more time for the ladies in the back, hey. The Warriors. Yes, sir. You want to call us? Yeah. Speak. Hey, shout out, Dave. Hey, yo, I just left Atlanta. I said I'll be back in August. The way I go to work, a big and bitch, I need an office. Huh? Pussy so good, should have put it in my coffin. If you play up on that clock, like back the fuck up, Bobby, nigga. He heard it, and I can see it in his face. Time to bring that back, my shit roll. I'ma bust their head no matter what I play. I'ma take the world, you get that. Bitch, what I say, hold a run, going undefeated just like OJ. No, I gotta kick that little rascal, catch it pump fake. Shorty called me, said she need that spanky. I said, okay, I lead by example. They are not a factor. You is not a queen, ho, and we ain't the Black Panther. 144, I'm who they send it, get them answers. I'm sicker than they cancer, I'm quick to get them bad. I don't know why they keep on playing with me. Who the one they sent to give me, Miss Glizzy with me. Took that beat so good, they like, who made the chili? Now they want Shit before the B&B The Waffle House with you 
Yeah, I can hear you, dude. What's going on, man? Lord, hey, yo, man, I appreciate what you're doing for the community. You know what I'm saying? I got to say that again. I appreciate everything that, I, you know, that, that, that your whole organization is bringing to the community, enlightening us and everything. And, you okay. know, it's doing something. But I seen when you came with the live, you was like called because a lot of people don't really know about this Christianity thing. Now, I know you a master, but can right. you break something down to me, please? What's that? All right. We all know that we didn't know anything about this Greco-Roman spiritual system before the Papa Bulldum diverses. And that is on the lands that were conquered, being that they had that paperwork that they got from the Pope and they went and conquered lands. Now, they didn't come conquering lands with no handshake and all that. If you didn't know Jesus, we're going to kill you and take everything. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I want you to kind of enlighten to the people and bring out the fact that the only reason why all of these spiritual systems that Africans are, well, black people all over the world, you know what I'm saying? Because there's so many variations of us. Right. Why we, you know, are gravitating to something that has not helped us since it was introduced to us. If we if we talk about the Papa Bull Dumb Diverses to the magnitude and level that we needed to be talked about to, it could probably bring a little clarity, you know what I mean? And, and, and can get people out of this fantasizing mind state that they in because like if you got a problem everybody say just pray well i do pray so just because you got the bible you're the, breaking the up bible a little bit. says that uh, your relationship with god your relationship with god is is is, is, is personal you see you're, you're, it's personal your relationship with the creator is personal okay there's oh, no sense. i'm breaking up yeah but there's no such thing as your relationship with God is personal. And there's no such thing as just praying to the most high, meaning those are things that right. you do. 
Like you do pray to the most high. But like Proverbs 28 and 9 says, if you turn your ear from hearing the law, your prayer is an abomination. So I can agree right. as far as how white Christians gave us Christianity, but that's not in the Bible what white Christians gave us. That's just to answer your question, like why would we follow? I don't think Israelites follow their system. That Christianity does follow their system. So what do I mean? When Christianity... Right was their system they believe in immaculate conception which is the foundation of the roman catholic church and every other church that comes out of it they believe jesus is god they believe that white people are the true israelites they believe their savior is white so we what we did as israelites was when we read that bible and got the truth of the book it told it, it compelled us to stay there because it was the only book that gave us our identity or the, or the only spirituality that gave us our identity. Because once you can give a people an identity, what you can give them. Oh, did he leave? Hello? Uh, are, can you hear me, brother, now? I can hear you now. Yeah, it, it, bro, okay, what bro, I'm inside this. I'm inside my tiny home. I bought a tiny home, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Oh. I had to start over. Okay. But um, right. it's, it's insulated, right. so it's kind of got like a bad connection. My bad. Got you. So what I was saying was that when we got these records, the reason why we don't get rid of the Bible, not that Papa Bull that you mentioned, we get rid of Christianity, but we don't get rid of the Bible because the Bible is what gives us our identity. That's the one thing that black people don't have, because when you have when you have an identity, you can have a culture that comes with it, laws that come with it, um, a code of ethics yeah. that come with it. all those things come with it. So. Because we are the children of the book, that's why we keep the book. We just don't keep Christianity. Okay. Now, with that being said, I understand clearly. That's perfect. Thank you. Because I needed that clarification. But when we go back to the Papa Bulls, when we go to all of because it was many of them, mm -hmm. when they were introducing this doctrine that we had no clue about, I'm not just talking about Africa. I'm talking about all the islands, everywhere they didn't conquer, because yeah. we were everywhere. But a lot of people think Africa, Papa we were Bulls? everywhere. But brother, do you have a specific papal bull that you're talking about? Because a papal bull oh. is just a papal bull is just something issued by the Pope. So, like you That's said, right. there's a lot of them that right. But do you have a specific one that you're referring to? Well, if I can, if I can remember correctly, the one of 1492 when they was okay. just coming up on the saccharines. I remember it. I read it. It's like the saccharines. If you don't believe in Jesus, the Muslims, all this, they were just oh, okay. saying all of these oh, different absolutely. things that were not Greco-Roman. And if you didn't Got believe it. and had no knowledge about what they were bringing forth, we'll just okay. kill you and take your land. Well, it's, it's a little worse than that. So what you talk yes, about, a, lot worse. A, better, a better word is um, they call it the doctrine of discovery. That's so right. It, doctrine of you, discovery. You're right. 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 So when you look up the doctrine of discovery, you'll find that this was something that the popes wrote that gave explorers the right to colonize, enslave, rape, and pillage other nations if they didn't believe in their God in the name of spreading their God. So I think that's we what go. you're right. So that's we right. don't, but listen, right. when you go to Genesis 9, 18 through 25, if you take that scripture out of the Bible, Genesis 9, 18 through 25, if you take that little small portion out, if you just take that small portion, it will be no such thing as racism. It will be no KKK. It'll be no white supremacists. It'll be no conquering of lands. None of that. Because in Genesis 9, 18 through 25, it clearly states that Ham seen them naked and all that. He woke up. They walked backwards, covered them up and all that. And then he woke up and then he asked God to curse people. Now, if you really okay. think about it, wait, 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 Ham was white. white. Okay, but slow, slow. Oh, I want to. Ham, hold on, but wait. Ham was white. Brother, because brother. the curse happened after brother. he was cursed. Hey, hey, brother, you gotta you gotta slow down because you're saying a lot okay. of stuff that's just not right. So in Genesis What's 9, right you gotta listen. Okay. You said if we take Genesis 9, 18 through 25 out, there would be no racism. That's incorrect. Because you can see the Lord separating us, um, the Lord choosing to love a nation and not love a nation after Genesis 9. Then you brought up the part about cursing. This chapter, Genesis 9, 18 to 25, is not about all races of people. It, it specifically the curse that he gives, he said, he said, and curse be caning, excuse me, a Canaan, a servant of servants, shall he be unto his brethren. So now that's only one tribe or one nation, Canaan. 
It doesn't include the other Hamitic tribes. It doesn't include the Shemitic tribes. It doesn't include the uh, what's the other one? Ham, Shem, and Jeff. The Jephetic tribe. But when you say the Jephetic, Jephetic, that, that's the next one. But when you saying the um, when 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 all right, when 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 he cursed Canaan, Canaan wasn't born yet. Canaan was born. No, when he cursed Noah, he didn't curse. When Noah cursed Ham, he didn't curse Ham. He cursed Canaan. Right. So when you think about that, if I have a child, I don't know the name of my grandson because he didn't bear children yet. You see what I'm saying? So you Ham was white told me that. because the curse made him black. Ham, well, Ham who was, stop, 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 brother, stop. There was no... Um, when you say Ham was white, there ain't no verse that says Ham was white. There was no recorded... It don't say why that Ham was black either. There was no the curse was being black skinned, woolly hair. This is what brother, the curse is right here. Not, woolly hair. You would have to show me where in the Bible curse is woolly hair. Because Christ had woolly okay. hair. So wait, right. before, we can do before, that. I go straight yeah. to it. I know yeah, you're yeah. very prolific. In, I'm not trying to over talk you like I know more than you. I'm you learning. You you you. You're, saying, you're saying you're not over talking me, but you, you keep over talking me. So when you say ham is white, there ain't no verse. The only first recorded white man or white nation is Esau. When it says the first came out red and hairy, that's Esau. Prior to that, at best, if you want to say Cain had the mark, um, the mark that Cain had was leprosy, but he wouldn't be uh, ethnically white. So when until Esau comes, that's when you get a white person. Outside of that, they would be what you would call melanated. So that's 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 not biblical when you say ham was white let me Unless clarify can i clarify yeah before the curse was placed you know the curse it, sh it shows the features in genesis i don't know exactly what verse it, show but it, explains. it doesn't show features in genesis it okay shows well what about when they said woolly hair dark skin elongated phallus you know, it's a lot of things that they did you to point to out the characteristics of that. a particular you, people that they wanted to take the land to, from. You would have to show that. It's in Genesis. It starts in 9, 18 through 25. Well, I'm going to read 9, 18. It says, And the sons of Noah went forth in the ark, Shem, Ham, and Japhet. Ham is the father of Canaan. These are the sons of Noah. And of them was the whole world, earth overspread. And Noah began to be a husband man and drink at the wine. I'm just going to skip a few verses. None of these verses says anything about nobody's rod. 25. It, go to 23, 24, 25. It's, I read that already. It says, curse be Canaan, not Ham. Curse be Canaan. So Canaan a, don't got the curse of Ham. I mean, hold up. Ham don't got the curse of Canaan. Canaan got the curse of Ham. That's my point. But Canaan is only one son. Ham had other sons that became nations. Yeah, and what nations are those? The Africans. Yeah. Shem is over uh, there in uh, the you got, got other, up right. you got other African and in nations. Africa is right. the whole of Canaan. That's Ham. Wait, slow down, Swifty. You got Egyptians, you got Ethiopians, you got Libyans. Those are other nations that eventually become what we call Africans today and Canaan. But the only, the only person that got the only person that got cursed was Canaan. Nobody else. That's right. Okay, so, so Canaan we, was cursed, and the curse uh, of the features uh, is black uh, with nappy uh, hair. I'm just saying. Uh, I'm just listen, saying. Ain't no goddamn curse of features. The curse was he would be a servant. If so you don't have a verse, hold on, if you don't have a verse that says the curse is his features, it's just jailhouse talk you talking, brother. No, jailhouse, man. Yeah. Listen, man I'm, brother, I just, I'm brother, a great father, 25 brother, years out of the prison, none of that. Brother, I'm just telling you what I've read. Hey, brother, when I'm saying check jailhouse, I ain't saying you was in jail. I'm saying this is bullshit talk. There ain't no what? verse. The verse says, "Curse be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be." You saying his curse is his hair? There ain't no verse that's only the hair. The features they said the eyes. Hey, brother, before big I let features, you know, brother, nose brother, bigger brother, than a white person. Brother, your lips. Brother, they brother, said big nose, brother, big lips, red eyes, nappy hair, black brother, skin, brother, elongated phallus. I'm gonna ask you one more time. Do you have a book, chapter, verse for this? Give me one second. Give me All one right. second. 
All right, I I'm go right straight to it. Yeah, give me I go straight, right straight to it. Yeah, please. I go right straight to it. All you got to really do, you got more resources. I'm on my phone. You got more resources. You can go let right now. Let me ask you another question. The curse you know, the characteristics I, of the people that are under the curse of him. It'll show you. Hey, it's brother, in Genesis. Hey, brother. Can I ask you one more question? What's that? What's five plus five? Ten, man. You know. Appreciate it. You bring the next person on. What's going on? Yeah, yeah, what's your shot? Please don't do me like, don't do the five plus five thing with me and get me off of here. It's Shabra. Yeah, what's, some Shabra what's going on? Uh? No, that brother was talking some some jive mess. You talking about some jailhouse talk? The, 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 he had them little Wayne dreads that look yeah. like. Yeah, that was the curse of Canaan. Yeah, the dress. I knew that was it. <laughs> Real curse of Canaan. <laughs> Sh Shapa said they look yeah. sick. Them dreads was all over the place, man. But what's going on, brother? You got a question or a comment? Yes, sir. I got a I got a couple questions. I got like 20, 30 minutes if that's okay. Depending, maybe it go a little shorter, maybe it go pause a little longer. But um I know you didn't for whatever reason, which I you know, I, I respect it. Uh you didn't want to have a conversation with, with Deacon um because of what however you felt. But um I didn't I just, say conversation, I said a I would debate, debate, a debate, yeah. Right. So um I just had a, a couple questions and I don't wanna before I do this, I don't wanna build up any straw men so i watched your video you made about the new covenant and so just so i am understanding properly what it is that you're saying um are you saying that the old covenant is abolished yeah okay. so what i'm saying what i'm saying is that when christ died anybody that believes in christ christ said his blood was for the new testament for the remission of sins mm -hmm. so if you're under christ you're in or under the new testament you're not forgiven under the old you're forgiven under the new okay um well i want to address that really quick because that's i believe that was one of your main focal points in the video before we get to jeremiah 31 mm -hmm. but i think and i want to again i want to put words in your mouth i think one of the things you said is um when when you quoted matthew 26 and 25 when christ says this is the blood of the new covenant which is shed for the remissions of sins for many and you're i think you asked what under what covenant are you receiving that remission of sins right yeah i think you just asked me that right yeah i'm, I'm asking if that's what you said yeah no what i'm so based on matthew's 26 i think i read a couple i did i think i did matthew i did mark mm -hmm. i don't think i did john might have been luke and it when it says for this is my blood of the new testament which is shed for many for the remission of sins mm -hmm. remission of sins is from the old meaning if I was before I came into the truth, whatever I I won't use that. I'll just use right here. So whatever anybody did based on the Old Testament that you would be punished for mm. Christ's blood renewed you from that. Not to go back into the sin, of course, but you're renewed from the old. OK, I understand. So um, if it's all right, I kind of wanted to just go into Jeremiah 31, which is where we see the foundation of the new covenant being laid and just make sure I'm understanding correctly. Yeah, that's fine. OK, so um, Jeremiah 31 and 31 says, behold, the days come, say the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. And here goes my first question. Although I was in husband to them, says the Lord. So the reason why I have a question is. The most high is saying I was a husband to them because earlier in Jeremiah in chapter three, he divorced yeah, them. Three. Right. right. So right. are you saying that the new covenant, do you, do you believe that the new covenant is synonymous with the marriage? Yeah, I believe that. So then you believe the marriage has already taken place? No, I think this is where I think when brothers that of your side that say we're not in the new Testament, this is where, and I said this um, last time, the arguments that you're about to present, and when I'm saying arguments, not in the combat. No, I got you. Yeah, 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 I got you. Appreciate it. The arguments that we're about to have is it. There's going to be some things we're going to agree on, and there's going to be some things we're not going to agree on. Mm -hmm. The only thing that I'm saying, and what we say is that if Christ renewed you, He renewed you into the New Testament. When people bring up points that have not been fulfilled yet, I'm going to say no, that's not. So, whereas you look at Jeremiah 31 and 32. I, I would reference uh, Matthew, the 25th chapter. And uh, when you know when it says uh, the, he likened the kingdom of heaven to a man marrying 10 women 
and they got to keep their candle lit five were wise five were unwise and when he comes back that's what this sounds like to me when it says um although i was when you asked me the question i'm sorry when you asked me the question right. about the husband about the marriage right. the marriage completes when they come in when he, i guess when they when he comes back and they got the light excuse me they got the oil for their lamps Mm -hmm. I, guess, I think that's I believe that's what you're asking me. Right. But if we agree that the new covenant is synonymous with the marriage and we also agree that the marriage hasn't taken place yet, how can the new covenant be established? Because what you're asking for is when they're coming together in the marriage. So if you want to use a metaphor to say that they're engaged, I'm fine with that. But I don't see how what Christ said goes against Jeremiah 31 and 32 or Matthew's 25 that I brought up. Right. I'm not, I don't, I'm not saying that it goes against, but you just admitted that the marriage and the new covenant are synonymous. And when you look at scriptures, like for example, Hosea chapter two, and I'll start it around verse. 14. You leave Jeremiah 31. Well, momentarily. Okay. Just, just to visit the point about the, the marriage. That's it. That is spoken about in Jeremiah 31 when he says, I was a husband unto them. So in Hosea 2 and 14, it says, therefore, behold, I will allure her, Israel, and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably unto her. It says, and I will give her her vineyards from thence in the valley of Accor for a door of hope. And I'm going to go on to the point. Look what it says in verse 16. And it shall be at that day, says the Lord, at that day, when we get brought into the wilderness, that thou shalt call me Ishi or my husband, my man, and no more Baali or my Lord. For I will take away the names of Baalim uh, Baal, Baal out of her mouth. And then in verse 18, it talks about the covenant that's made. So how is it that if the new covenant is synonymous with the marriage, which I know I already, already asked, but it's more specific with a time period right here. It says that that's when the new covenant and the marriage is going to take place. So how can we be in the new covenant? So the Lord is, so you're telling me we don't call on the Lord today? I'm telling you that Hosea 2 hasn't taken place. No, I'm just asking. No, I, I'm I'm basing it off of the scripture that it says, in, in it shall be in that day, said the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ishi, and thou shalt no more call me Bailey. Right. You're saying we don't call him Ishi today? Not as a nation, absolutely not. Okay, this doesn't say as a nation, and this is where, again, where we have this complication, because even when we go back to Jeremiah 31, and even in this verse, hmm. The laws are not in with parts now. You're going to say not as a nation. We call the Lord Ishi now. You're going to say not as a nation. I can't call on the Lord now if Christ doesn't bring me into the New Testament, even if I wanted to. Do we agree? What does that mean? I don't, I'm not understanding. Meaning, right. According to Matthew 26, if, Christ, if, if Matthew 26, if Christ doesn't remit our sins into the New Testament, can I call on the Lord? Where did it say that Christ remits your sins into the New Testament? When he says, this is my blood of the New Testament for the remission of sins. Right. His blood is not for the Old Testament. His mouth said his blood is for the New Testament. We agree, right? Well, let's just, let me just read this real quick. I don't, I don't think I agree. I want to make sure I agree um, or don't agree. So okay. Hebrews 9 and 15 says, and for this cause, he's the mediator of the New Testament. We agree on that that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament so he died for our sins that we committed in the old covenant that's the same thing i i, I think i just said that but he didn't die under the new covenant you said what it sounded like you said under the new covenant though no that's i'm gonna try to say it again mm -hmm. you remember you asked me this earlier when i read matthews 26 i said christ said his blood is of excuse me let me just read it again so because i keep paraphrasing i don't want to paraphrase it wrong so matthews 26 and 28 mm -hmm. it says and for this is my blood of the new testament mm -hmm. so his blood is not for the old testament so what i said was mm -hmm. if his if his blood is shed for you it's shed for the new testament it's not shed for the old so if it's good no i didn't want to interrupt so i can go ahead so if his blood is shed and remits your sins, he's not remitting your sins into the Old Testament. He's remitting your sins in the New Testament. Even in you, okay, I'm sorry. What you do you mean he's remitting your sins into the New Testament? Meaning the only way you can get into the new is if he remits your sins from the old. 
that's the whole point of Hebrews 9 and 15 saying he is the mediator of the New Testament. So he done mediated for us already. He done mediated. Once you're born again, you're born into you're not born into the old. You're not born again to be in the Old Testament. You're born again to be in the New Testament. Well, that's not what Matthew 26 and 25 says, though. Matthew 26 and 25 says that his blood is the blood of the new covenant. Yes. So through his blood, we are able to get into the new covenant. However, as we just read in Hosea 2, that hasn't taken place yet. No, so that's, what, that's what you're saying. But when you read Hebrews 9, when you read Hebrews 9, when I said mediate, mediate is in Hebrews 9. Mediate is not in Matthew 26, but you brought Hebrews 9. So when it says he's the mediator, if he's your mediator, and he mediates for you and you're allowed to be born again. That's of the New Testament. That's not of the old. So let's right. say if I endure to the I don't, I don't like to use me. Let's mm -hmm. say if you endure to the end and you die in this lifetime. I don't want to say you either. I'm going to just make a random because I don't want to wish. No, I, I'm not going to take it any. I already. I, already no, I, just, I don't know. I ain't, it ain't about you taking it away. I just don't. I don't want to make myself right. And I don't want to wish no, no harm on nobody else. I'm going to just make up a person. Let's say if a person today. Christ mediates for them mm -hmm. into the New Testament and they die. They endure to the end. When Christ returns, they're already in. They don't they're not going to be they're not going to have to go through a whole nother mediation. They're already in the New Testament. They, they died under that mediation. They died in the New Testament. So are you saying that prior to Christ dying, that he was not our mediator? No. And before Christ came. No, when, before he died, like, let me just preface it. Okay. When did the new covenant start? The new covenant started, I would say once, I would say once Christ died. Right. Christ, so are you saying prior to him dying that he wasn't our mediator? That's a tough question. That's a, that's a, that's a weird question that you're asking me because when Christ came on the scene, that's all he preached was that he was the mediator. Right now, before that, it would just be prophesied that he would come. So the Old Testament is about him coming to mediate mm -hmm. uh, for us, like Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. I think um, Hosea, the first chapter. So we hear about Christ coming. So if you want to say he was mediating for us in the spirit, then I would agree. He was mediating for us in the spirit. But until his blood. So like if I read a verse when it says um, uh, in verse 11 in Hebrews nine. But Christ being coming a high priest of good things to come by greater, more perfect tabernacle, not made with blood of his hands. Um, I'm just skipping a couple of verses. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once to the holy place. That blood is not for the old. That blood is only for the new. So if his blood is for the new, why would I want to be in the old? Well, it's not. A, yeah. I'm, are you done? I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, I'm done. I'm done. It's, it's not about wanting to be in the order, wanting to be in the new. It's just going back to again, and I want to address what you said, like head on. It's not again. It's not about wanting to. It's like what does the Bible say? So it says that if the new covenant is synonymous with the marriage, and you agreed already, the marriage is not has not taken place yet. You're saying that it's synonymous. The Bible don't say that it's synonymous. You you said it's synonymous, brother. I I didn't have a problem with saying that the marriage. Like when Christ returns, mm -hmm. that completes it. But we're still, even if I go into Hebrews, the 10th chapter in the same chapter. I just, so I just want to record the Bible doesn't say that it's synonymous. Well, that's can what I, you're saying, can I and I slightly agree with you. Okay. So, so let's, let's see if it is Hosea 2 and 14. Again, therefore, behold, I will allure right. her and bring her into the wilderness and mm -hmm. speak comfortably to her. This is the heavenly father with the nation of Israel, right? Yes. Okay. And then it says, uh, in verse 16, and it shall be at that day, says the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ishi. What does that mean that we're going to call him Ishi? I think, I don't know what Ishi means. I'm going to say maybe father. It's, it's Ayash, I think, is the, is the. Uh, uh, okay, no problem. I can, you can double check because I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's Ayash. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, like my man, that's what it means. Right. right? Okay, mm -hmm. so what does that mean if we call the Heavenly Father our man as a nation? It means like right now when I call a heavenly father, my father, I don't like to use the word. We live in such a poor society. But if I was to say the Lord is my man, I can say that right now. But I could not say that without Christ's blood bringing me into the New Testament. Well, again, but Captain, it says it shall be at that day, says the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ishi. It's not talking about right now. It's talking about the day where we go into the wilderness. Do you think we've already that's already taken place? No, when it says, and it shall be in that day, that day can be any day because we're calling on him right now. 
Okay, so let me make sure I understand. So Hosea 2 and 14 is, therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness. Is that, has that taken place? No, we have not been put in the wilderness, no. Okay, that hasn't taken place. And I will give her her vineyards from thence and mm -hmm. the valley of a core for a door of hope. Has that taken place? No. Okay, and she shall sing there as in the days of her youth, as mm -hmm. in the day and as in the day when she came up out of the land of Egypt. Has that taken place? No. And it shall be at that day. When it says that day, what day is it referring to? That day is now. <laughs> so wait a minute. I don't, I'm not trying to. Let me, I'm not trying to laugh. So like yet to be like patronizing. I don't care about no day. Come but, on. I don't care I'm, about just, I'm not understanding, and I think I can speak for a few amount of people. When it says, "How does it magically go from in the future, and then verse 16 conveniently that day turns into now?" A matter of fact, let me just keep reading. Thou shalt call me Ishi, and shall call me no more Baal. For I will take away the names of Baal out of her mouth. What does that mean? I will take away the names of Baal out of her mouth. The, mer the name of Baal is out of my mouth right now. Right, but, but who's the her right there? Israel. Right. Is the name of Baal out of Israel's mouth right now? As a nation? No. But okay. that's for people that believe in magic. So when I say people that believe in magic, people are waiting for everything that this is fulfilled when every nation, every Israelite takes that name out. But the reason why I said in that day is now, as far as saying the Lord, thou shalt call me Ishi, is because we can do that today. Right now, today, the only reason we can call on the Lord is because Christ's blood remissed our sins from the old, put us into the New Testament, and now we can call on him. So even in Hebrews 9, you have brought up Hebrews 9. So I answered again your question to Hosea. So you brought up Hebrews 9. If I was to go into the next chapter, it gives you a difference between the old and the new. Okay. So in Hebrews 10, for example, in Hebrews 10, um, 28, because I mean, because the advantage you and I have is we kind of know the scripture. But if I need to read a couple of verses up, That's you let fine. me know. Yeah, you're, you're good. Yeah. It's so show. Show. I'm just a guest. No, I wouldn't say that to everybody. I wouldn't make you see the last cat that was on the show. I wouldn't. Yeah, say don't, that. I don't. Yeah, yeah, I got you. I got so you. The scripture. Yeah, so yeah. Hebrews ten and twenty eight. It says, "He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses." Would you say that that's the Old Testament or Old Covenant? What Moses' law? The verse. I'm gonna read it again. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Would you be? Would you say that that's under the Old Testament or Old Covenant? Uh, yeah, I guess. Okay, so in verse 29, of how much sorer punishment suppose ye shall ye be thought worthy who have trodden underfoot the Son of God and have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and have done despite unto the spirit of grace? Is that different than Moses? Um, which part? The What you just read in verse 29? Yeah. Uh, what do you mean is it different than Moses? Is the blood of that covenant different than the blood of Moses' covenant? So that covenant is in reference to the new covenant. So now what we, where we it's would disagree reference. is where we would disagree is my understanding of what Hebrews 10 and 28 to 29 is. So it, no problem. And I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem with you doing it. I just want to get on record. You saying that that is two different covenants there, right? When it says, and I've counted the blood of the covenant, that's the blood of Christ that he spilled so that we could enter into the new covenant eventually. Yes. Okay. So mm -hmm. I just want to, so yes, these are two different covenants. Yes. Okay, you, you said you have a different understanding. I'll let you give it. Yeah, I so I agree. Um, verse 28, he that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. No problem. So now what the question is, what does verse 29 mean? Is verse 29 saying that at the point in which the author of Hebrews wrote Hebrews 10 and 29 that they're in the new covenant? No. What Hebrews 10 and 29 is doing is speaking on people who take what Christ's blood did, which was give us grace, and then make it to where we can like make him the minister of sin. Nowhere does this say that we're in the new covenant. And furthermore, how we know this isn't saying we're in the new covenant is a couple of things. Uh, when you continue reading in Jeremiah verse 30 or chapter 32, uh, which continues on in Jeremiah 31 in Jeremiah 32, it says, I'll just get to the point in verse 40. It says, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them that they, I will not turn away from them to do them good. But I will put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me. What verse are you reading? Jeremiah 32 and 40. Okay. So I'm answering a question in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 28. So 
how we know it's not saying that it's we're under the new covenant based on that is in the new covenant, according to Jeremiah 32, as well as a plethora of other scriptures, we're, we can't even sin. Um, I don't know if I agree with that, but what, what I just want to get on record is you just said that that blood in that covenant is different from Moses, mm -hmm. but you're not calling it the New Testament. Mm, no, that's right? not what you said. No, that's why I want to walk with you, because I only know of the old covenant and new covenant. Okay. I got you. So let me let me just try to show yeah. it up. Yeah, we, and so just, if, just wanna... if you despise Moses law or covenant, you die without mercy under two or three witnesses. You're going to have a much sore punishment if you take Christ's blood and use it as a license to sin. Because that's what it's talking about when it says if we sin willfully. But it's, it's not saying that we're in the new covenant. And what I'm doing and going to Jeremiah 32 to illustrate that is under the new covenant, God's going to put his fear in our hearts and we won't depart from him at all. How do you depart from God? So it's in 20, 20 you depart from God by breaking the law. That's exactly. So, so I'm going to I'm gonna let you go. So okay. if, if that's the case. In Jeremiah 32, it says we will not break the law. He'll put his fear in our hearts so that we will not break the law. How is it that people in Hebrews 10 and 28 are breaking the law? Okay, so Jeremiah 32 and 40, you're pairing with Hebrews 10 and 28? No, what I'm doing is illustrating that that's not a verse that proves that we're in the new covenant. And okay. all that is doing is... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All that's basically doing is people stepping, like speeding on Christ's blood and treating it like it's nothing because they're sinning willfully. That's what is it? Verse 26. Right. But his blood is for the new covenant, though. Right. I don't deny it. OK, so if his blood is for the new covenant. So 26 says if you sin willfully after getting knowledge of the truth, the knowledge of the truth would be that Christ remisses our sins. We agree. Right. That's I mean, he is the truth. No, but I'm saying the knowledge. So you okay? Christ is the truth, but a part of that truth ain't him remission our sins. Sure. Okay then. So that covenant that he remissed our sins of under, what covenant is that? The old covenant, and when he remissed our sins, brother. So okay, we're in oh. Hebrews nine still. So, so <laughs> <laughs> but you just said you just said that Hebrews ten to twenty eight is Moses' covenant. No, you I acknowledge didn't. that. Oh, sorry, yes, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Yes, sir. Right. You acknowledge that 10 and 29 is a different covenant from Moses. Right. So if the covenant in 29 that is, I'm going to read it again. It says uh, mm -hmm. of how much sore punishment. So now under the new covenant, mm -hmm. the punishment is worse. Do we agree so far? No. So you don't believe that the punishment is worse under the new covenant? Under the new covenant, you don't receive any punishment, as I illustrated in Jeremiah 32. So again, I'll, I'll reiterate what Jeremiah, mm. or sorry, what Hebrews 10 and 29 is saying. So let me go back to it. In Jeremiah 10 and 29, when it says, how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant where he was sanctified an unholy thing. All this is saying is if somebody died under Moses' law, they die without mercy under two or three witnesses. And if somebody then wants to take Christ's sacrifice and use that as a license to sin, you're getting hung up on because the word covenant is there. Christ's blood is the blood of the covenant. But here's the here's the issue. People cannot sin while they're under the new covenant. It's impossible. And I would That's like you to show me and I would like you to show me anywhere in the Bible where you can sin while the law of God, where he wrote the law on your heart. OK, so here's where you're confusing. And this is why when people ask and you're not you and uh, Deacon are not the first people that ask me to uh, debate this subject. And this is why I call this like a, a ignorant subject mm -hmm. or a stupid subject, because what you're arguing is the kingdom. That's what you're arguing. Whereas what I'm saying is what we are under right now, mm -hmm. that blood of that covenant wherewith he was sanctified and unholy thing and have done unto the spirit, excuse me, despite unto the spirit of grace. That can only happen if we're under that New Testament, because that's what Christ said. Okay. Christ said his blood is the New Testament. Yes or no? He said his blood is the blood of the new covenant. Yes, he did. OK, so if he said his blood is of the new covenant and that's what we're saying, mm -hmm. I don't see why people have a problem with mm -hmm. us saying that. And then in Hebrews 10 and 28 and um, when it says um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just going to it again. In Hebrews 10 and 28, when it says the exact same thing mm -hmm. for um, the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and have done despite unto the spirit of grace, 
the verses that brothers like yourselves run to is the completion. Even when it says the spirit of grace, that spirit of grace that we under is it better. Maybe, maybe I, maybe I should say it like this. When we talk about the new being under the new Testament, you see how this verse says, despite unto the spirit of grace. Yes, I do. So I'm just, I'm writing down what you're saying. So I don't forget. That's all I'm, no, I'm not paying attention. No, that's fine. But you see how it says done despite unto the spirit of grace. Yes, I do. Is that spirit of grace under the new Testament? You said, is the spirit of grace under the new Testament? Grace yes. has always existed. No, but I'm, found talk, grace I'm talking about right now, this, this spirit of grace that we're under right now, is it under the new Testament? We won't need grace while we're under the new Testament because in the new covenant or new Testament, we will be programmed to keep God's laws perfectly, which is why I read Jeremiah 32 and 40, which I would like cap, if you can, to explain when it says I don't have a problem. I'm, I'm going to explain Jeremiah 32 and 40, mm -hmm. but I, I would I'm going to tell you from, I'm disappointed that you don't understand that the spirit of grace is under the New Testament mm -hmm. because that's the grace that we're under. And I was going to help you. I'm really not I'm not looking at this as a debate. I'm trying to teach you mm -hmm. or maybe te because you represent the side that say we're not in the New Testament. I represent the side that say we are. So what I'm trying to do is maybe bridge a gap so y'all can understand what we're saying, because we understand what y'all saying. So I'm going to do it in reverse. So I'm going to go to your Jeremiah 32 and 40. Right. I'll, right. Do, I'll do it in reverse. So Jeremiah 32 and 40. Right. So in Jeremiah 32 and 40, it says, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them and will not turn away from them to do them good. But I will put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me. Mm -hmm. Right. You understand, right? Of course, I understand. That's why I'm asking you to explain it. Okay. So when, so when okay. he says, I just want to rephrase my question, if that's all right. Okay, no problem. That's fine. When he says, I will make an everlasting covenant with them. What covenant is that? That that goes right along with the new covenant. OK, so he says, I, I will, will make an everlasting covenant with them. And you're saying that this has already happened. The, the rest of this, when it says that they shall not depart as a nation. No, that has not happened. But when he says, I will put my fear in their hearts, I would turn them, turn them. I would not turn away from them. That has happened. OK, so when, it's, you know, go ahead. so when he says, I will put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me earlier, which I agree, we depart from God when we break the commandments. So do we as a nation still break the commandments? That's why I answered it the way that I did so that I can answer Jeremiah 32 and 40 clean. Mm. The argument and this is why I said I'm, I'm trying to teach y'all. The argument that y'all are talking about is completion. Like y'all look at like until the nation of Israel is excuse me is whole excuse me is whole, we're not in the New Testament. What we're saying is that Christ redeemed us under that New Testament, so we repent now, so that we can so that we remain in that New Testament. Because if we endure to the end. We don't need no new sacrifice. We don't need nothing. We're in the New Testament already. We're already a part of that. If Christ was to return now, those of us that obeyed him, even the scriptures say they that are dead will rise up first. The only way they can rise up is those that died under Christ in that New Testament. They would rise first. And then those of us that are alive would rise up with him. That's all under the New Testament. That's not under the Old Testament. Okay. So. That's so y'all be looking at it that way, whereas we look at it. And the reason why I asked you about the spirit of grace is because when you bring me futuristic scriptures, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to answer it and say whatever's happened, didn't happen. Whatever happened, happened. But when this verse 29 says, have counted the blood of the covenant, which you already agreed is not the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. So you would have to tell me what covenant is that blood for? Because you already said that's not the Old Testament blood. Right. And I already answered that. But here's the issue. What, what, what was your answer again? I understand that right there in verse 29, the blood of the covenant, Christ's blood is the catalyst by which we use to enter into the new covenant. I don't deny that. Here's the issue. Oh, wait, 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 before, before, the before you go, let me just keep it right here, Sir. Before you go. I, I let you talk for about two and a half minutes. No, 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 no. I just want be, to be, because remember I said this is teaching. I ain't really trying to go back and forth. I'm trying to teach to where. Yeah, we just, we just talk, I got you. But when you said that his blood brought us into the new testament i didn't say that say say again what you just said so his blood is the catalyst to entering into the new covenant okay so it's already taken place the catalyst to the right. new testament so let me give you an example so the us dollar 
is the catalyst. If I want to go on Amazon.com and purchase something like the Bible talks about Christ's blood purchasing, purchasing us. Uh, it, that's a catalyst for me to be able to obtain whatever good or item that I want to purchase on Amazon.com. But just because I hit enter and purchase does not mean that I have received said item yet. In the same way, Christ's blood, he shed his blood. That's the catalyst to us entering into the new covenant. But that does not mean, as I've demonstrated, that we have entered into the new covenant. So that's, that's not true. So catalyst means a personal thing that precipitates an event. Exactly. Right? What does precipitate so mean? Now, so now the precip I'm about to break it down. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take the same thing you said. Christ is the catalyst. His blood is the catalyst. I'm the event when I get to repent for my sins. Katazai is the event. You're the event. Everybody is the event as they get to repent for their sins because of this thing that, excuse me, because of Christ coming before us. Mm -hmm. So once he does that, you're in it because I don't have to wait. It's like telling what you're saying is I have to wait to get forgiven. Is that what we, I'm asking? I asked, you, I asked you a question, though, and so I'm you have an answer. It. So, again, this all stems from going back to Jeremiah 32 and 40. And so I'm asking you. When it says, I will put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me, you, you're you saying that that's, that part is, all, is happening right now. But how is that happening if we agree that to depart from God means to break the commandments and people still break the commandments today? Well, you would have to show me where they were once keeping the commandments. What do you mean they once keeping the commandments? In order to break them, they had to have one time had them. So use me for an example. You would have to show me where I departed from the most high okay. to apply this to. Is Jer does the new covenant is the new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah or Captain Tazariak and the ISUBK? The new covenant is with the house of Israel, the house of Judah, once what Christ mean the house. The the nation. Right. Meaning anyone okay. from the wait one second. Anyone from the nation, but even that nation has to do what to receive it? What do you, again? That's I mean, a, it's a simple question. What does that mean? It, it is a simple question, but I'm not even done following. You're not even done following my line of reasoning, so I don't have an issue answering the question. But you're trying to evade. I you had a line of questions. You, okay, you made a statement that I didn't answer your question yet. If you have a line of questions, I don't mind. Okay, but you so, did only just make it seem like you had one question. No problem, and I, I'll just I apologize. But no as problem. you just stated, Jeremiah 31 says the new covenant is with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. We agree that's the nation. Yeah, so you can't use you as an example. When you say, well, have I done this or have I done that? That's not what Jeremiah 31 says. Jeremiah 31 says, according to what you just said, and I agree, that it's for the nation. So can you show me the nation? Is the nation sinning or not sinning? As a nation, the nation is sinning. Okay, but so also, what does Jeremiah 32 I'm not, say? Wait, I'm, not fin I'm not finished. Right. As a nation, the nation is still sinning. But also as a nation, the nation has the law in their inward parts. You can read that in Romans. Okay, in, so Romans, in Romans 2 and 14, when it says, For when the Gentiles which have not the law do my nature, the, can, excuse me, things contained in the law, these having not the law are law unto themselves, which show the work of their law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness and their thoughts the mean while accusing or else excusing one another. So you can have the law in your hearts now. I have the law in my heart. Okay. So there's a difference between the Lord writing the law in your heart and you, like I think in Psalm 37, when it talks about. I'm not talking about Psalms. I'm talking about Romans. You know, I understand. I understand. But you're talking about the law being in your heart. And so, for example, Psalms 37 talks about and other scriptures like Deuteronomy talk about you circumcising your heart. There's a difference between you circumcising your heart or you writing the law in your heart, because we know it's not a literal circumcision and the Lord himself doing this. This is why, again, in Jeremiah 32, it says, I will put my fear in them. God himself is going to do this. I will put my fear in them that they shall not depart from me. How what do you think they had the law in their hearts if the Lord didn't give it to them? Again, and okay, so when it says that the Gentiles which have not the law, who are these Gentiles? Israelites. I, I agree. So what does it mean that they don't have the law? They don't have nobody policing them or forcing them to do the law. Okay, so how do they figure out the law? Be, uh, you, you just, you, I don't know why you asked me that question. Because again, that's the Holy Spirit. Even Christ said that the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, shall teach you all things. That's the spirit coming upon them, just like the spirit comes upon us today and teaches us. So why are they called Gentiles? Who are they called Gentiles by? Whoever the, what do you mean who are they call Gentiles by? The author of Romans, Paul. 
Right. And you know why he's saying that? Because the Pharisees or Sadducees or the, those of the circumcision wouldn't accept them. So the where's argument. The would say what? What you just said. Where is that in the Bible? When when what I just said, as far as. OK, so if you go to Galatians one, when Peter would uh, walk away from those of the circumcision, why was he walking away from those? Excuse me. When Peter would walk away from those of the uncircumcision. Why? Because Peter said. Thou knows that it's an unlawful thing for that me being a Jew to come amongst one of another nation. That's a law of the Sadducees and Pharisees. That's not a law in the Bible. But but That's again, you just, you just added a whole bunch of stuff to Romans two, which is fine. I didn't, I wait, 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 slow down. I didn't mm -hmm. add nothing to Romans two. Mm -hmm. You asked me who is the Gentiles. I said the Gentiles was Israelites. You said why are they being called Israelites? Mm -hmm. They're being excuse me being being called Gentiles. Number one, they're in Rome and they're being called Gentiles and not being allowed back by those of the circumcision. That was the biggest argument. Those of the circumcision didn't want to accept those that they considered uncircumcised. Well, what's the difference between the what's the difference between they of the circumcision and the Gentiles? They of the only difference is what well, the only difference that is supposed to be is who's not keeping the law and who's keeping the law. OK, so perfect. that's what's supposed so to be the difference. The difference is they that are keeping the law versus they that are not keeping the law. But you just said that these Gentiles had the Holy Spirit put in them to keep the law. So is it that they're keeping the law given to them by the Holy Spirit or they're not? I don't know how you just got that out of what I just said, because I listened to what you said. That's how I got it. I didn't, I didn't say what you just said, though. What I before we I said that the Holy you said, how did they have the law? I said the Holy Spirit, like, and I quoted a scripture that's in the scripture when Christ said the Holy Spirit shall teach you. That's in the scripture. Then you started asking me about who are these Gentiles. I said Israel, which you agreed. Then you asked me why they're being called Gentiles, and then we're getting into this whole argument of circumcision, uncircumcision, and you talk about, you asked me to show you where the Sadducees and Pharisees was like that. And then I use Acts the 10th chapter where Peter said it's an unlawful thing, which is not an unlawful thing. That's what the Sadducees and Pharisees made up. That's their law. Okay, okay. so you got, you got, you got, you got back to the original point. Yeah, and was, was, back to the original point. And there's there's another, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. I don't, I don't hear no echo. There's an echo on my end. Okay, no, it's good. Go ahead. So now, but in Romans 2 and 15, it clearly says the law written in their hearts. Right. So the law, so like Jeremiah 31, when I would put my law in their inward parts, the law is in, listen, in 2024, the law is in my inward part right now. Right. Again, here's the problem, you, what you just said. You just said there's, because I asked you about the uncircumcision versus the circumcision before we get back to Jeremiah 32. You said that the uncircumcision, the difference between the uncircumcision and the Gentiles, which I agree are Israelites, is that one keeps the law and that one does not. Right. Is that the, is that my correct? In what I, I, said what it, I said what it's supposed to be. OK. Is it what it's supposed to be? And when Paul writes that, is he writing what's supposed to be or not supposed to be? The reason why I say what it's supposed to be is because their argument is that they wasn't circumcised on the first day. Excuse me, on the eighth day. I'm, I'm talking so, about Paul, though, not what other people are saying, what Paul is saying, because Paul wrote Romans. So when we go further down in the same chapter, Romans 2, it says, For the circumcision verily, verily profited if thou keep the law, but if thou be a break of the law, thy circumcision is made, excuse me, uncircumcision. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision, and shall not the circumcision which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision does transgress the law. So that's why I said, so in verse 28, for he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward of the flesh, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And the circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit, right. not in the letter whose praise is not of, excuse me, and not in the letter whose praise is not of men, but of God. So they had the law in their inward part. So what their outward part was irrelevant. Okay. So can you have the law written in your inward parts prior to the new covenant? Yes or no? That's a tough one because we broke the old covenant. So even if you had it, if you don't have Christ, it wouldn't matter. So is it a yes or is it a no? I, I said it's a tough one because you could find like Zacharias and Elizabeth in Luke, the first chapter, how they kept the law. 
So you had uh, pockets of people that actually kept the law. But all of that is irrelevant now, because if you're not under Christ, even if you was keeping the law, if you don't believe in Christ, it don't even matter. OK, so when you say it's a tough one, is that I don't know or is that yes or no? I just gave you an example of two people. people so, so, they, the so you can. So you can then. Yeah, I would never say that no one did, couldn't keep the law. So what's the uniqueness in the new covenant when, when God says, I will write my law in your inward parts? If other people. The uniqueness is that there's not a police to make you do it. Like right now, nobody has to make me not commit adultery, not sell drugs, not get high, not sleep with white women, not do nothing. Nobody has to make me do that. It's in my spirit. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. There ain't no, where's the priest? Well, I always like to use the word police. There is no police around us anymore. We police ourselves. That's what Romans 2 is saying. A law unto yourself. That's happening right now mm -hmm. under that Holy Spirit teaching us under the New Testament, which you yeah. already admitted in Hebrews 10 and 29, that covenant is the New Testament. In verse 29, yes. But it doesn't say that you're in the New Testament. I said that Christ's blood is a catalyst entering into the New Testament. So like, for example, let me show you, let me show you an example of what I mean. That when we looked up that word catalyst, mm -hmm which I'm going to read again. Go ahead. The catalyst says a personal thing that precipitates an event. So I'm a sinner. Christ comes. I know Christ's blood redeemed me. I accept that. Now I'm in that event. I'm in that New Testament. <laughs> I mean, it precipitate me. It's very simple. The fact that you said Moses what represents the old, if we're not, here's a question. If we're not in the New Testament and you just admitted that was the old, what are we in? We're in the old covenant. And I'm going to further, I'm, I'm, I'm going to kind of explain because I just asked me a question. So again, going back to Hebrews 10 and 29, I agree Christ's blood is the uh, way that we are able to enter into the new covenant. The problem with that is, again, like, we're acting as if this doesn't exist. In Jeremiah 32 and 40, or sorry, verse um, 40, yeah, in verse 40, God says when we're in the new covenant, that he will put his fear in our hearts that they shall not depart from me. The issue that you have, that you now have with this what is you're three? saying, Jeremiah 32 and 40, mm -hmm. the, issue, the issue that you now have is that you're saying one thing and God is saying another thing. God is saying that when we're in the new covenant, that we're not going to sin. You're taking one scripture in Hebrews that you're respectfully misappropriating and attempted to say that that means that you can sin while in the new covenant. Now, earlier, when you asked me concerning when it says afterwards about the, the spirit of grace, why would you need grace when in the new covenant you're not going to sin? Thank you. I was at <laughs> this is what I'm saying, man. When I said I'm trying to teach you, because when it says the spirit of grace, do you remember me saying that when we have this conversation, you're going to bring up things that I'm going to say hasn't happened yet. And all we're saying is that if Christ redeemed you, you are in the New Testament. Do you remember me saying that? I do remember you saying that. Yes. Right. So when it says the spirit of grace, that's a part of the New Testament. We're not under the law. We're under grace. So what would you need if we're in the new covenant and we're not going to sin? Why would you need what do you need grace? You from? keep saying you need great. Excuse me. You the grace or the spirit of grace that we're under is a time to correct yourself until Christ returns. Do you need a time to correct yourself? No, not anymore. No. Okay. How do you not? Because you're in the new covenant? No, not because I'm in the new covenant, but okay, because so I'm not. So wait, 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 wait. Hold on. I'm not. Go ahead. Not because I'm in the new covenant. Not, excuse me. Let me say it differently. Not just because I'm in the new covenant. So when Christ came, excuse me, when I, came into the truth and repented from my sins. Now I'm just in the spirit of maintaining that and enduring until the end, until Christ returns. Mm -hmm. That's the spirit of grace. The grace is we should be dead. Mm -hmm. That's what 10 and 28, when it says he that despised Moses law die without mercy under two or three witnesses, we should all be dead for all the sins that we committed. Do you agree or disagree? I don't disagree, but that doesn't, excuse me, answer my question. I'm not finished. I'm just asking if you agree or disagree that we should be dead under Moses' law. Yeah, but that has absolutely no relevance to my question. When you asked about the spirit of grace, that's right. what you asked about, right? Yes. So my question was, again, was why would you need, if you're in the new covenant and in the new covenant, you will not sin and you know the Lord, what would you need grace from? 
you need the spirit. I'm going to read it again. I'm trying to help you. It says of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall be thought worthy who have trodden underfoot the son of God and have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and have done despite unto the spirit of grace. What that simply means is the grace that I got allowed me to be forgiven of my sins. If I sin again, I'm not under that. I get punished again. That's so why you need grace still. I just I answered that already. I said no. Okay, I so you don't need grace. But what so was the reason why? The reason why was I was an adulterer. I was a thief. I was a drug addict. I did all manner of evil that I needed grace from. Mm -hmm. And the Lord redeemed me from that. And according to his own mouth, his blood is of the New Testament. You just said verse 29 that covenant is of the new testament so right. everything that we've done is under the new testament nothing is done under the old christ didn't come for the old testament Would christ, that include sin there's no listen revelations 1 and 18 when christ said he has the keys to hell and death what does that mean that has no relevance to what i asked it has everything relevance because christ is the one that can either punish you or kill you. That's what the hell. That's what that has, that has nothing to do with what I asked, though. Okay, nothing Ask at all. Your question again, and I'll help you. Okay, so it's, this all stems from Jeremiah 32 and 40. We've only been able to go over one scripture, which is okay. That's but not true this, because well, I, well, I, say, well, I don't want to, don't, scripture, but we still stuck on this one, which is okay. That's what I know. You're stuck on it. I answered it. I got you. you. So you want to you want to go back to it so I can give you an answer again? Sure, sure. So when it says, I will make an everlasting covenant with them, matter of fact, let's start a little earlier. So it says, Behold, I will I will gather them out of all countries. That hasn't happened yet. I never said it did. That once I'm, again, I'm not saying what you said. That I'm asking. Okay, no, problem. no, that has not happened yet. Okay, and it says whether I have driven them in my anger, and then it goes on to say I will bring them again to this place and will cause them to dwell safely. That hasn't happened yet. No. Okay, they shall be my people. I will be their God, and I will give them one heart that they may fear me forever, for the good. Of, has that happened yet? Wait, let me get back to the verse. I, I was um pulling a different verse. Hold on. Just put this over here. Let me get back. This is all in Jeremiah 32 and 40 that you was reading. Well, it's starting at now verse 37, reading into the context. Okay, so you started up at 37. All right, go ahead. Right. So, I'm sorry, you started out. I would gather them out of countries. Nope. Right. And we agree that it hasn't happened yet. Right. Okay. Then, so then when it says in verse 40, so that, that happens, and then and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Mm -hmm that I will not turn away from them to do them good. What does that mean that he will not turn away to, from us to turn uh, to do us good? Meaning when he makes this covenant with us, uh, he would not turn away from us, but he would do good to us with okay. this covenant. Mm -hmm. Will he do bad to us when he makes this covenant? No, not okay. at all. Did the transatlantic slave trade take place after Christ died? Hell yeah. Was that good or bad? That was bad. We deserved it too. Okay, so you just said when the new covenant takes place that Christ, that God will only do good to us, which I agree, and not do bad to us. But you believe that Christ's death started the new covenant and the transatlantic slave trade took place, which you admit was bad, and I agree, after Christ died. But in Jeremiah 32, when you moved up to 37, when it says I will gather them out of all countries, that part hasn't happened yet. But what we can right. read, right, but what we can read Jeremiah 31 and 31, when it says, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, with the house of Judah, mm. we can then reread that in Hebrews, the eighth chapter. We can then read Hebrews, the ninth chapter, where Christ mm. is the mediator of the New Testament. We can then read Hebrews, the 10th chapter, which you already agreed Moses covenant was over and that Christ is the new covenant. So when you talk about that everlasting covenant, you're talking about something else that's going to take place in the future what do you mean something else i just want to make sure i follow when i say something an, another event him gathering us back in jeremiah 32 right. him gathering us out of the other nations and then reestablishing or affirming the remaining part of that covenant so could you show me where the covenant is progressive like you're insinuating i don't have to show the. that's i know that's, you don't have to i'm asking no, no, no. You just got to let me finish. Go when ahead. I say I don't have to show that to you because our whole position has been if Christ mm -hmm. redeemed you. So here's another scripture I give. So you can, I'll try to help you out even more. Mm -hmm. Second Corinthians three and six. It says who also have made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the spirit for the letter killeth. But the spirit giveth life. 
So now we have another scripture that says now we're able ministers of the New Testament. Right. So if we're ministers. Are we ministers of the old or are we ministers of the new? We're teaching people about the new covenant. I agree. Here's the issue. In the new covenant, we won't have to teach our neighbors to know the Lord for all will know in the Lord. So you go into that scripture wait, to try, wait, to, try wait, to prove wait. a point proves my point. But I'm not I'm not done with Jeremiah 30. It, that actually proves when y'all say when y'all say you shall not teach. Mm. Don't say you ain't going to teach nothing. I it just say says you ain't teaching them to know the Lord. Right. But it doesn't say that you ain't going to teach them about Christ. If y'all if y'all dumb it down to that so simple, and I think in John it says, let no man teach you at all. So if y'all take that teaching literally, I guess John ain't John is right when he says no man should teach you. I guess the Holy Spirit just gonna teach you. Got you. So I'll address that, but I want to make sure I understand what you just said. So what I no, what I'm saying now mm -hmm. is when it says who have also made us able ministers of the new testament, right? We're ministering people into the new testament. Right. So as they accept Christ, are they in the old or are they in the new? Uh, we're currently in the old covenant. So again, so the fact that you're a minister of so the fact that you're a minister of the New Testament illustrates that you're not in the new covenant. Because as we see in Jeremiah 31, it says they will not teach every man his neighbor or his brother saying, know the Lord. According to the Bible, how does one know the Lord? I want to just make one statement. You can't be a minister of something if you yourself aren't in it. I can't be a I can't be a minister of Cathedral Faith Baptist Church unless I'm in Cathedral Faith Baptist Church. That's not I true. Can't, I can't be a minister of the New Testament unless I'm in it. So when you say yeah. how, okay, I don't want you to think I didn't answer your question. No, no, I got you. Okay, so in Jeremiah, you read Jeremiah 31 and 34. Right. Well, uh, I asked you. I asked you a question though, right? So when it says, it, but it's based off of Jeremiah 31 and 34. Of course, yes. So how does one know the Lord? Right. I'm just I'm just going to the scripture. So I'm going to read. I'm going to read 34. Then I'm going to come up to 33 that I'm going to answer your question. Mm -hmm. 34 says they shall teach no more. Every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord, for they shall know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and will remember their sin no more. To answer your question, I'm going to start at verse 33. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God. And they shall be my people. That takes place before the no man. That's why I read Romans 2 when they had the law in their inward parts. Mm -hmm. That's why you can read when Christ said the Holy Spirit, the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. He shall teach you all things. That's putting the law in your inward parts. So all of that takes place. So in 34, when it says they shall teach no more every man his neighbor um, and every man his brother saying, know the Lord, for they shall know me. That's after they put it in their hearts. That's after they get it. And it's saying, know the Lord. It ain't saying know about Christ because you got to get taught about Christ first. That's what we minister in them about Christ. We're saying, no, under Christ, you are now in the New Testament. Your sins are forgiven. And then after that. They won't have to teach nobody to know the Lord. Like even this can take place now. Nobody has to teach us in this school to know the Lord because we know the Lord. OK, so I want to illustrate. I'm, I'm going to try to use when I say that what you just did was hypocritical. I don't mean that you're a hypocrite in general. Right. So I want to show everybody the hypocrisy in what you just said. So when we go to Jeremiah 31, you're saying in verse 34, and they shall not and they shall not teach every man his neighbor saying, know the Lord. Because that's after verse 31 when the law is put in their inward parts. But if I ask you in verse 32, um, when it says not according to the uh, covenant that I made with their fathers and the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. And then in verse 33, when it says, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. When it says those, is it referring to something that was spoken of earlier? Back up. Can you back up a little bit and say that again? I apologize. Okay. So when it says those after those days, say it to the Lord, is it referring to something that was said in this context earlier? When it's in verse, which in verse 32, 33 and 33, when it, which word you was talking about after those days, say it to the Lord. Days, yeah. Yeah. When it said, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, say it to the Lord. That's after I would say that this is talking about the time of Christ. That's okay. when it starts. It said after those days, though. So what are those days? I mean, if it says those, that means it's, it, it's reiterating or uh, going into something that was said prior. Yeah. So when it says, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel 
after those days, meaning we done broke it after those days mean a time. So after those days, and we know that those days happened because Christ came. That's why Hebrews is re reciting the same exact thing to let him know that those days is now. OK, so let me make sure. Let me make sure I understand. Right. Mm -hmm. So you went to Jeremiah 31, and when it says they shall not know, I didn't go to Jer you went to Jeremiah 31. Uh, I went to Jeremiah 31, your rebuttal. There's a little bit of choppy audio. I don't can you hear me still? Yeah, I hear you just fine. Okay. So in Jeremiah 32, this is again because I'm trying to make sure I understand. This is the hypocrisy I'm talking about. When when I go to the scripture and then you rebut it, you said that verse, I think 34, when it says they shall not teach every man his neighbors, saying, Know the Lord. Yeah, because that's after verse, I believe it's 33, when they get the law put in their inward parts. But if I'm going to follow that same reasoning, in Jeremiah 32 and 37, when it says that he will gather us out of all countries and make an everlasting covenant, I should follow the same logic that you're saying, that we get this everlasting covenant after we get brought out of the land. How does it flip flop from one context to another? Because that, that was my whole point. And it's beautiful that Jeremiah 31 comes before jeremiah 32 and maybe this can be what i can teach you to give you the point you notice in jeremiah 31 when it talks about the covenant it doesn't say everlasting it just establishes the new covenant in jeremiah 32 if you want to call that the what's the best word i could give for you like the payment of the covenant even that's a, a good analogy for you to understand because all of these things in Jeremiah 31 and 33 takes place now. We're not waiting to get in there. Like that's that like like the covenant is like a contract. So we have a written contract that we all sign. You sign it when you give your life over to Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, when the everlasting part comes, these are just things that have to take place later. But it's all taken but you have to excuse me, but you have to be in that covenant now. If you didn't so like, for example, if you didn't give your life to Christ, Christ returns, you can't be a part of that covenant. Right. We agree. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't see how any of this has to do with the direct. I'm going to say I'm going to say it one more time. Mm -hmm. If you didn't give your life over to Christ now and Christ comes back, you're not a part of that covenant. Right. Are you referring to the new covenant? Yeah. I don't. The Bible doesn't say anyone's a part of that covenant right now. Well, I'm going to say it again. If you didn't give your life over to Christ now, mm -hmm. right now, right. like you're not a believer in Christ mm -hmm. and Christ comes back, are you in that covenant? Am I in the new covenant? No. There's things that have to take place even when Christ returns. Then we enter into the new covenant. No, because if I sign the contract, that's the whole point of 2 Corinthians, the third chapter, when it says, for the letter killeth, mm -hmm. but the spirit giveth life. When it says ministers of the New Testament to minister is to go teach what you just said. We're teaching people that you said it like we're teaching people to come into the New Testament. Right. That's how you said it. Right. No. I'm, when I read Jeremiah 31 it says you shall not teach everyone his neighbor to know the Lord. No, that's not what I was. You got to. OK. As you jump over your scriptures, I follow. You got to follow what I'm saying. I'm when following. I read when I read Second Corinthians three and six mm -hmm. and I said able ministers of the new testament you mm -hmm. said we're ministering them to be in the new testament that's what you said right no we're teaching them about the things that are going to happen in the new testament so they're not in anything right now you're saying that they're still in the old we're, well that is something so it's not not anything we're in the old covenant currently yes. okay so christ's blood keeps them in the old covenant what do you mean christ's blood does it Christ's blood was shed so that we can eventually enter into the new covenant. I'm going to say the blood does not make us in the new covenant right now. That's, that's the, what that's I asked the, you. That's not what I asked you. I said Christ's blood mm -hmm. keeps us in the old covenant until he returns. Can you show me that in the scripture? Sure. I just yeah, did. I I'll do it again. Um, let me get to one more specific. So Ezekiel 37. No, that. Oh, okay. I just want to ask you the scripture. Yeah. Wait. OK, but I just want to make sure you said Christ's blood keeps us in the old covenant until he returns. Wait, wait but I just want like I'm going to give you an example. So that's when I'm, asking, though, Captain. I'm not saying that that's not what I actually I just mm -hmm. want to help you understand what I'm looking for as an answer. Mm -hmm. But when I read Matthews 26, mm -hmm. Christ said, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many of the remission of sins. Mm -hmm. So that's very simple. His blood is for the New Testament. 
You said his blood keeps us in the Old Testament. That's not all I said, though. So you can't mis misrepresent me. I. What else did I say? My, that was my question. No, no, that's not all I said. That's what I'm saying. So you, you, you took the second half of what I said and you didn't. You just like omitted it. So when you asked me, does Christ's blood uh, keep us in the old covenant? Uh, you asked me that after asking another question that didn't really make sense. So his blood keeps us in the old covenant until we enter into the new one when he returns. So his blood, again, is the catalyst by which we enter into the new. But just because his blood is a catalyst by which we enter into the new does not make us in the new. For example, and um, I'm gonna answer your not the question, question I answered. I asked that, so. that is, but I'm gonna I'm gonna answer the question you said. Can you show me that in the scriptures? What, that's the question. That, that his blood keeps us in the Old Testament until he returns. That's what that's what my answer was. And so um, when I say catalyst, let me give an example, right? So in Daniel nine, this is I'm gonna I'm just answering the thing with the catalyst, and then I'm gonna directly respond to your question. So when it says seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy, you that brother. Daniel 9 and 24. All right. So it says to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness. When Christ died, did he make an end of sins and bring in everlasting righteousness? Or is that something that through his blood will take place in the future? Yeah, he did make an end of sins. Um, OK, do Israelites still sin? Israelites that don't know how to follow Christ, yes. Okay, so how did he make an end of sins if Israelites, regardless of if they follow Christ or not, still sin? Because if you're not following Christ, then he didn't die for you. If you're not following Christ, and he oh, so what does it mean in first John 2 and 2? And he is the propitiation for our sin. Matter of fact, what does John 3 16 mean when he said for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son? You got to believe in him, believing in him is doing what he said. I don't deny that. But anyway, back back to the point. So but, I don't, but you still ain't show me where his I, blood. I'm, to, I'm not done with the second part. Right. So when it, when it talks about bringing everlasting righteousness, Christ has brought in everlasting righteousness. No, because this earth is still in wickedness. OK, exactly. So that's the, the reason right. why I'm going here is showing you an example of because you keep harping on Matthew 26 when it says that this is the blood of the new covenant. And it's. You but a hey, hey, you froze. I don't know if he got a phone call or not. We, I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to just wait to see if the brother comes back. I'm going to try to get a brother some time. Um, hey, maybe play a song. I, I don't want to interrupt this bill with nothing else. So pull up a song. What's that other song I was telling you to play? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go to that song. We gonna let me see if that's him that came back. Let me see. No, nah, don't add him. No, no, no. That's the Michael Jackson lookalike. <laughs> <laughs> we. I don't want to. Hey, y'all. I'm gonna just play a song. I do not want to interrupt this conversation with him. So hopefully he comes back. So we just gonna play this song, and then go from there. All right. Save the Lord God. Unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. Seen a man rise from the dust, shit, glorious in my sight. Never yield, I'm indebted to that old Lord Christ. Can't let them colors fly, only blood will suffice. Try to vibe my brethren, I'ma put it in his life. Is you born to indoor? Damn right. I need that white gold with them stones. Look like that already. Shit, the time until the bones are healed and we live again. This shit right here. For the cold blooded killers and the gangsters vibe. But the hoes love it, bring it for a five dollar tea. Spend okay, I don't know what happened, but uh, can you hear me? You're muted, you're muted, Captain. I can't hear you. You hear us now? Yeah, you can hear us now. Yeah, it, you froze yeah, on our end, so I, I didn't want to interrupt yeah, the yeah, bills. I, I, know, I don't know what happened. So, my point uh, in going to. Um, Daniel 9 was to show how, again, because your point in going to Matthew 26 is he shed his blood. That's the blood of the new covenant, and therefore we should be in it right now. And when I went to Daniel 9 is to show you 
Christ died for those um, aforementioned things to take place and the sin, everlasting righteousness. But we can agree that everlasting righteousness has not taken place on the earth. So if we agree that everlasting righteousness has not taken place on the earth, that means Christ's blood was shed for that to happen in the future. And the same way Christ's blood was shed for the future to take up. place. Now I want to wait, 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 back up about 10 seconds. You was breaking up. You still, okay. you know, can you hear me right now? No, not, I can hear you, but it's um, electronic. All right, let me call a number real quick. You say what? You can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to call in. Okay, you gonna what call number? What's, what's the last four digits? Uh, four four five nine. All right, we're gonna wait for the brother to call in. All right, me the mic. Yeah, I'm here. I don't know what happened. I look, I go, I look real bad as soon as I start going in. Now that mysteriously yeah, the, the internet goes out. Oh, yeah, you, you wasn't going in. Lord. <laughs> That's the Lord. Well, that's what I don't know if the brother got a phone call. Yeah, yeah nah, nah. the Lord messed up your internet, man. Yeah, that's see, I gotta give, I gotta be the new covenant for that. Yeah, okay. listen, I'm trying um, to minister you to you right now. No, I got you, but um, <laughs> just a kind of last thing because I gotta head to work here in a second, and I appreciate you. One thing, Cap, I always did respect about you, brother, is. You definitely allowed me my time to speak on your platform, so I definitely appreciate that, brother. Yeah, um, and I, and that's what I said. And, and, like the the yeah. debate talk aside, and just so you know, aside, I would have preferred, and this is just me and my opinion, and this is pure honesty. I hated mm -hmm. that y'all departed from your group, and that's to say that should mean something for me because you know we say it shouldn't be no other group; it should just be one. I right? should be K, but to see y'all brothers, what transpired between y'all brothers. I just felt y'all should have mourned and I would have rather y'all just stay together. And so I didn't want to, and you, I think you noticed that it was supposed to be me and gorilla on this subject. I think, you know, that I don't know if right. he was privy to it or not, but it's supposed to be me and gorilla on the subject. So now if I go ahead and debate Deacon, I'm not a brother to gorilla. So I just didn't want to do it with either or. So I was, I would, res I understand. yeah, I would respect it more if y'all were just men, whatever happened to y'all. But, um, Right. And I, and I want to and I know you and not to go into the situation mm -hmm. too much, but I know one thing that you had reservations about was you felt that um, you felt that Deacon was disloyal or whatnot. And again, this is maybe something that can be had um, behind closed doors. All right. Then we can stop right here and, and I'll text out if this is your phone number on my line. I'll text. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can hear my line personally. Yeah, I have two last things on the on the subject, if that's all right. But you gotta finish. You gotta finish answering my question with a scripture. That no, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I need to finish answering your question. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah, but um, I wasn't. It's not no testament to any disloyalty. At least, um, I mean, definitely not on my part because I wasn't. I didn't just leave. And you know, there was there's an attempt behind the scenes to try to amend things. But I was. Removed, so and and listen, if I could help, if I could help in any way, just hit me up, and I would gladly. Okay, beautiful. 
So my last thing was, um, I don't know how much you heard about Daniel Nine, but the point, and I'll wrap this up because I got. Yeah, it. I heard everything you said for the most part about Daniel Nine. I heard most so, of it. Yeah. So I'll just reiterate it, just for if anybody else didn't hear. So when I keep using the word catalyst, this is in direct response to Captain Cesario going into Matthew twenty six when it says, "This is the blood of the new covenant which is shed for the remission of sins of many." And my response to that is, yes, Christ's blood is a catalyst to us entering into the new covenant. And I went to Daniel 9 to show an example of this. In verse 24, when it says that through Christ's blood, that he's going to end, make an end of sin and everlasting righteousness. The fact that everlasting righteousness, which we agree is not on the earth right now, illustrates that his blood is the catalyst for that to take place in the future. In the same way that Christ's blood is the catalyst for the new covenant to be established in the future. Right now, his, his question that I need to answer is, I can't remember exactly how you framed it. But it again. Something like, I said, um. Does Christ? Can you show blood, me if Christ's blood is a well? Yeah, to keep us you said time. Christ's blood keep, keeps us in the Old Testament, and I asked you to show me a verse that Christ's blood keeps us in the Old Testament. Got you. So again, I don't know if maybe it cut out, but I didn't just say that. I said His blood keeps us in the Old Covenant until we return. Ultimately, it keeps us in the New Covenant. Put us in the New Covenant when He returns. That's why I made mention of that, right? But uh, when you read Ezekiel thirty-seven. Uh, let me see. Where should I I'll start at verse 21. And say unto them, thus says the Lord. And then I have one last question for you after this. Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whether they be gone, and will gather them on every side. Bring them into their own land. Can we agree that this has not taken place? Yeah, because it's talking about he's gathering um, gotcha. the children of Israel, right? Right. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them all. That king is who? Christ, of course, right? Mm -hmm. Then it says in verse 23 that we won't defile ourselves with idols, nor with their transgressions, meaning we won't. Do we agree that when this takes place, that we won't sin at all? Um, okay. Based I'll, on verse 23, nor with any of their transgressions. Yeah, just so I can get to my answer, I'll just I'll say, okay, that's fine. Okay, and then verse 24 says, and David, my servant, shall be king over them. That's the Messiah, right? The Davidic Messiah. That's why I say David. Right. I agree. Yep. Okay, David, that's so what this, and it's the Davidic Messiah, and then in verse 26, it says, moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. So all these things happen simultaneously. We have to get brought back to Israel, unite, go and then we enter into the new covenant and when Christ returns because these things don't take place until he returns so that's my answer to your question okay but so i just wanted on record he didn't answer my question with a scripture his statement was that christ's blood keeps us in the old testament until he returns that's what he said christ said that his blood was for the new testament for remission of sins bringing us to multiple covenant points doesn't change that christ brings us into the new testament again if we don't sign that contract with christ christ returns israelites will die if we sign that contract and endure to the end then christ returns we fulfill the contract that's why, and I know you said you had one one question, but that's why I said this. Yeah, is, that's fine. Con, that's why I said this is a teaching. This is not. I don't look at this as a debate because it's stupid to debate. Because when you talk about futuristic events, we're going to agree. But the whole point of being in the New Testament is for His return, like so that you have to be in it now. Romans five, I think it's Romans five. Hold on, Romans five. And nine, I think, is the scripture I'm gonna read. Romans five and nine says, "Much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through Him." Even being justified by His blood is in the new covenant, so that when He comes back, we don't have to suffer the wrath that everybody else that's not in that covenant will have to suffer. That's the whole point of being in this testament now. If we're under Moses' covenant. Or we're under the old covenant and Christ comes back, we're gonna die like that. We're gonna get the wrath. But if we are justified by his blood, which he said is the new testament, then we are saved from his wrath. Now I know you said you had to go, but you had a question for me. Yeah, so uh and just to uh, very briefly respond to that. That that what Ezekiel 37 does is not only answer his question, but just like the other scriptures I brought out, it illustrates a timeline as to when these things will be taking place. 
It tells us that uh, when he when we get brought back out of our land, then he makes this everlasting covenant with us. Right. So that that didn't answer or his rebuttal didn't properly rebut what I said. But for one of my last questions is in the beginning of the show, I asked you if the old covenant is abolished and you said yes. Uh, what is the old covenant? The old covenant is the um, laws that we agreed to keep um, when Moses brought them down. So the law. Yes, the laws. That's correct. So the law is abolished. Hell no. Who said that? Okay. I asked you, let me repeat it again. Is the old covenant abolished? You said yes, right? I said the old covenant. The law, To be specific, when the Old Testament is abolished. That's correct. Okay. Okay. And the Old Testament and the Old Covenant are synonymous. Yeah, I would say that Covenant Testament, I would agree with that. And it's abolished. Uh, yeah, I would agree with that. And the Old Covenant is the laws that Moses gave us. Yeah. And so you're saying the laws that Moses gave us are abolished. No. <laughs> wait, wait, I'm, okay. The Old Covenant is abolished. The Old Covenant is the laws that Moses gave us. No. Okay. You asked me about the laws that Moses gave are abolished. Did I say yes or no? Or did I say no? Repeat that one more time. Sorry. When you asked me about the old covenant being abolished, I said yes. But did you ask me about the laws of Moses being abolished? No, I asked you. Okay. I asked you what the old covenant, if the old covenant was abolished, you said, yes, I said I asked the you laws that we, so let me help. Let me, I'm going to try to do this again. Cause I think I know where you're going. So I'm going to preface my answer by saying the laws was already here. When Moses came, he brought a contract with us. Okay. So when I'm saying it's abolished, we broke that contract that Moses. Nonetheless, gave. nonetheless, you said that the laws that Moses gave us is the old covenant and also say the old covenant is abolished. That's fine. I can move on. But not that. the law, though. That's why I asked you. Did you ask? Well, you're me? trying to separate them. You're trying to separate it because you realize how bad it sounds. But that's all right. No, no, no. Okay. I'm not trying to separate them for how bad it sounds. I see why you're saying that um, it sounds bad because I think you're confusing two things. So if, if we've been discussing Jeremiah 31 and 31 the whole time when he says, when I say that that contract is gone, I'm basing that off of Jeremiah 31 and 31. We broke it back then during Jeremiah. So I'm trying to okay. rephrase it so that you're not confused with my answer. I'm clearly confusing you because you don't understand. I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not confused at all. Okay, I'm so I'm going to read the scripture to answer. Um Verse 32, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. So I'm not saying what Moses gave us is broken. What I'm saying is what we did was break what Moses gave us. Maybe that helps you understand. understand. So that has nothing to Maybe. do with. Um, well, well, let me help you out. So that has nothing to do with the law of adultery or the law of the Passover. That's not what I'm talking about. When I'm saying it's no more. It's because we broke it. Okay. Um, so my final question is, uh, if we're in the new covenant, why are we suffering old covenant curses? Because punishments of the law never, excuse me, it never said that punishments of the law would ever go away. That's the whole point of Hebrews 10 and 28 and why Christ was given the keys to hell and death. The whole point of Hebrews right. 10 and 28 is that under this covenant, it's worse than the new. So when I read to right. you, so it, Hebrews 10 and 28, it, okay, I'm sorry, you want to say something? Well, I'm just, I'm trying to make sure, because you said that the old covenant is, is not in effect. It's, it's abolished. How can something that is abolished be affecting us? So again, what I said was, and I, that's why I try to re-clarify for you. Because I, I'm assuming you just didn't understand what I'm talking about. The law always existed. The law, there would never not be a time that there's not a law. But when you're talking about the covenant of Moses, we broke that covenant. Moses didn't break a covenant. God didn't break a covenant. We broke the covenant. God didn't change and say, don't keep my law. We stopped keeping the law. That's how it broke. So when I'm saying that it's broke, it's broke from our end. Not from the most high's end, not from Moses' end, it's broken from our end. So under Christ, that's why Hebrews 10 and 28 says, He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses, which you yourself agreed 
that the covenant that we're talking about in verse 28 is different than we talk about the covenant in 29. So you agree with me. So if, if when verse no, I don't, I don't. You clearly said these are two different covenants. That's what you said. Did you not? Again, I'm just. It's a yes that has no that has no bearing. No, that has so what it says wait, 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 is on, Christ's on, blood on, is the blood of the new wait, covenant. Hold, hold, I don't deny that. Hold on, a but it doesn't say anywhere in that context that we're currently under that new covenant that He shed His blood. For. Hold on a side. You agree with me earlier that Hebrews 28 and Hebrews 29 are talking about two different covenants. All right. Thank you. So I, you try to make it seem like I was making something up. So verse 29 says of how much sore punishment suppose ye. So under the New Testament, the punishment is worse. It never said. You, that, so let me so let me let me, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. You can you. Your plan. Go ahead. I, I appreciate it. It says of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who have trodden foot under the son of God and have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and have done despite unto the spirit of grace. So your sins get forgiven under the new Testament. If you disobey God, you have a sore punishment. So punishments will happen until Christ return. But Christ is the one that's punishing you because Moses, there is no two or three witnesses that can come punish you under Moses law. Yeah, I'm done. So let me make sure. Mm -hmm. Let me let me make sure I'm understanding this. So you can receive punishments while being in the new covenant, even though Jeremiah 32 says while in the new covenant that he will not turn away from us to do us any good. Jeremiah 32 says it uses a different word. It talks about an everlasting covenant. And as you read the verses above that, that's talk about when he gathers us out. But Jeremiah 31 comes before Jeremiah 32. So the New Testament gets established. And then we go or sign in. I don't want to use the word sign, but we go into it when Christ comes back. But we're under that. So if we haven't agreed, if we haven't joined ourselves to Christ now, we cannot even get into it when he returns. So we're in it now because we have agreed. We have said Christ is my savior. Christ is my redeemer. This is what he said. Do I'm doing it. And when he returns, I've earned the right to join into that everlasting part. So when y'all harp right, the, so, right. So when y'all harping on the everlasting part, as I said earlier, nobody's going to argue with you about the things that happen in the future. But if you're not joined to that covenant right now, you don't have a future in there. You just don't. It's like so what does it mean then in Jeremiah thirty-one when it says that he will remember our sins no more? What verse in Jeremiah thirty-one? Um. Yeah, one second. Let me see. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 31, 31 and I think it's 30. No, 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 And 34. Uh, it says, I, for yeah. I, I will forgive that. I'm sorry. They shall know me from the least of them unto the greatest, saith the Lord. I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sins no more. He don't remember your sins. Like Christ said, ye must be born again. When you're born again, what does that mean? What does that mean, though? He doesn't remember you. So I'm asking you about that. I'm, that's what I'm explaining. That's what Christ said. When ye must be born again, he's the the woman at the well when she was caught in adultery. What did Christ say? Go and sin no more. That was Christ forgiving her, but she can't sin no more. So Jeremiah 31 and 34, whatever I did as Tyree Gas, the Lord is not going to remember no more because of Christ. Is it okay? Mm -hmm. I'm still having how in how can you sin when according to the Bible it just we just read it he says he will not remember our sins anymore that he would put his fear in our heart that we would not depart from him you already agreed depart means to break the commandments when so the Bible saying that when you are in a new covenant you, you won't break you, the you commandments just but you're saying when we're new covenant we can break the commandments you just combine two scriptures Jeremiah 32 and Jeremiah 31. Um, Jeremiah 31 says he's he going to forgive our iniquity and remember the sin no more. Jeremiah 32, with the everlasting covenant, which comes when Christ returns, that's what you're talking about. So you're combining two parts when it says they shall not depart from me. Um, even with the uh, sin no more in Jeremiah 31, that can take place right now. I'm sorry, he don't say they shall sin no more. He said, I will remember their sin no more. So he hasn't remembered your sins. The only way he can remember your sins is if you commit him again. 
which is why Christ, excuse me, which is why Christ said, he that endured to the end, the same shall be saved. So the issue that we have here is Christ said out of his mouth, his blood is of the New Testament. You're saying his blood is of the Old Testament, but you can't give a scripture that says that. That's, that's not what I said. Here's my literal last okay, question. Let me, say, let me say how you said it. Yeah. You said his blood is of the Old Testament until he returns. But there ain't no scripture that says that. If we're going to take anybody's word, we'll take Christ's word. He said his blood is of the New Testament. I'll go with what he said. Okay. Does the Lord remember your sin if you sin in the New Covenant? Hebrews 10 and 29 says, excuse me, 10 and 26 says, if you sin willfully, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. What is the, right. what is Does the he remember it though? That, yeah, hell yeah, he's going to remember it. Right, but he says that in the new covenant, he won't remember our sins anymore. He didn't say in the new covenant, he won't remember them no more. He'll remember what you did in the past. That does not give you a license to sin. That's the whole point of Hebrew. When you read Hebrews 8, nine and ten eight brings you right back to jeremiah 31 because it says for finding fault with them and then in the end of verse eight uh chapter eight rather it says now for he saith a new covenant <laughs> verse 13 says he saith a new covenant he had made the first old now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away and then when you go to Hebrews, right and when you go to hebrews 9 and 1 it says then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and worldly sanctuary. So when you go through it down to 10 verses, it's telling you everything that happened in the old. Verse 11, a Christ being come and have good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. And then I'm for time's sake, because I know you got to go. Verse 14, of how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. It don't say New Testament to come. It says New Testament. But by means of death, for the transgressions that were under the First Testament. So if Christ is your mediator, you were under the First Testament. But now you're under the New Testament. That they which are called. So you just and then when it says, they which right. are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. So now when you're under it, because Christ redeemed you, now you're working to receive the inheritance. That's why I said, when you talk about futuristic things, if I fail, me, Tazaryak, fail at doing this job, I don't receive that promise of eternal inheritance. But while I have Christ as my mediator under the New Testament and I'm doing what he say do, I do have access to the eternal inheritance. Okay, so last thing, literally last thing. You conveniently read verse 13 in Hebrews 8 and didn't really address it. It says, in that he saith, uh, behold, a new covenant. He hath made the first old. Right. Now that which, I can, I can't remember, I'm trying to quote up the top of my head. Now that which remaineth waxeth old and is ready to vanish away. Right. Has, has the old covenant vanished away? Yes. That's why. I, okay. So does, you said I didn't. Got you. So, does, so does Hebrews eight? Does, does Hebrews eight say it's ready to vanish away? Yes. Or does it say that it has? Okay, hold on. Does it say it has vanished away, or does it say it's ready to vanish away? So Hebrews eight and thirteen said it's ready to van vanish away, and I right. So if I said I'm ready to go to work, does that mean I'm at work or I'm about to go to work? No, that means you on your way to work right now. And that's why when you read Hebrews 8 and 13, which I read, you said I didn't. Right, but I'm not at work, though. Right? No, you're not. But you're on your way right. to work. So if, if it's Wait. ready to vanish, that means it hasn't vanished. I don't right. know how you get around that one. I, I'm about to tell you because listening is an art. And I didn't run from the scripture. I brought the scripture up and I read it. And I said, and when you go to the next chapter. Verse one, Hebrews nine and one, the very next chapter says, then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and worldly sanctuary. And then I told you, I said, when you read the next nine verses, it talks about everything of the first covenant because he remember verse 13 said ready to vanish away. So he's now talking about everything that will be a part of the first covenant in Hebrews nine, one through 10. And then verse 11 through 15 he brings you right into the New Testament. So I didn't run from the scripture. I read right to it. And I'm... I'm yeah, but it says it's ready to vanish. It's like weird how... It says literally ready to vanish. That's not, not the that it conclusion has of the conversation, though. 
Just like but why would he say it's ready to vanish away if it already has? Because he's teaching like I'm teaching you. Just like when, when you read the beginning of Hebrews 8, when he says for finding fault with them, he's teaching them what Jeremiah said. So he starts off at verse 8 in Hebrews 8 and 7. For if the first covenant had been faultless, there should have been no place sought for a second. So he's teaching them. And then in 13, he said, he saith a new covenant, he had made the first old. And so in Hebrews 9, he breaks down everything from Hebrews 9 to 10 about the old. And then in verse 11, it says, but Christ being come in high priest, he's not a high priest of the Old Testament. He's a high priest of the New Testament. So if Christ is your high priest and he's the high priest of the New Testament, how can you say we're under the old? You're under a testament that Christ is not under. That's literally not what any of it said at all. It it again, just says, and for you this just part, added a couple. You just added something. I didn't add nothing. Added. I'm gonna read it you, again. You, you did add that. I'll it it says it's ready to vanish I'll, away. Not that it has, but I, I appreciate out, you then. the time, brother. I'll and read. um, if if possible, we could definitely, you know, if you're interested, set something up in the future. So I appreciate you, brother. Yeah, about Shimon Shabbat. Yeah, about Shimon Shabbat. And I'll read because he said I added Hebrews nine and fifteen, and for this cause. He is the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressors that was under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. I didn't add anything to it. Can you read the next verse for me? For where a testament is, where the, what? Where a testament is, where what? For where a testament is. So now we get to know where the New Testament is. There must also of necessity be the death of the testator. I just that's I, the verse I wanted to read before he got off the yeah, phone. Yeah, I just want to know who is the testator and did he die? Because that's where the new covenant is. That's where the new testament is. That's all I got. Now, out of fairness to him, because he's not here, I won't talk no trash about him. Like I said, this was a class for me. This was not a a, a battle or a debate. Um I just don't know. What the I don't know what the issue is to just say we're in the New Testament because Christ redeemed us of our sins. I think people create a doctrine unnecessarily. There should not be a doctrine of we're not in the New Testament, because if we're not in the New Testament and everywhere we read, it talks about the New Testament. Then what are we in? So. That's all I got with that. Um, we did have people that wanted to come in. Do not, do not bring do not bring golden swords and you could kick him matter you could ban golden swords thank you thank you sir. yeah golden swords can never come on it I told I said I wasn't never entertaining golden swords even if I hop on clubhouse so he'll never be entertained but you could bring David on what time you got to get out of here all right okay hey shalom brother hey uh, shalom let, let, I just want to get straight to the meat of it. Let's get uh first Peter's uh one and thirteen, please. Cause that's well, what's, what's that? I mean, what's the subject or question? I'm on the same topic and subject you brothers on. Okay. So first Peter's one and thirteen. Wherefore gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So the revelation is talking about the revealing, right? So when we we, it's like a scroll being unrolled a little bit at a time. So as Christ is being, being revealed through revelation, we supposed to, that's what we're enduring to the end for. So we're working towards the new covenant, right? So just hear me out. So with the, I don't know if you brothers understand the law of sin to death. That was the old school master. Yes, brother, you have a point to say that by, by having Christ in our hearts and this, that, and other, and, and you have to endure to the end, though. That's the key part. We're working our way to that inheritance from the depth of the test data. Are you working under it under the old or are you working under it under the new? I'm working with it all, brother, because you can't have one without the other. A woman with one breast look funny. You can't you can't be under the old and the new. You're either under the old or you're under okay. the new. I agree with you. I, I agree with you with um working towards it. I agree with you. Right. So then explain right now, we're, we're applying Malachi 316 as we speak. No, when I'm saying old, I'm not talking about prophecies. This this is what I mean when I have this conversation. I don't think y'all listen. I think that y'all focus on 
I think y'all focus on things that haven't happened yet and you want to disqualify yourself from being under that testament. But as I just read Hebrews 9 and 16, it okay. clearly it, Hebrews 9 and 16 clearly says, for where testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. So did Christ die? Yes, he did. What testament did he die under? For the New Testament. And if we follow after Christ and Christ redeemed us, what did we die under? We're still under the law of sin and death. What did we die we're, under? We're still, that's the sword. Because when you, watch this, brother, just hear me out. When you brought up the sword things, so if we die, if we if we know the sense there and what Christ did, we sacrifice Christ again or afresh. Everybody so run. It's like everybody, nobody. You ain't listening. Uh, just, I, just, I, asked you, I, I asked you if mm -hmm. you said Christ died. Yes, uh, I agree. So yes. if we die under Christ, what are we dying under? You're dying. Listen to what I'm saying. Listen good. When you uh, when you're still under the law of sin and death, but you still have to. Then why would why would Paul have to go ask for the thorn to be removed from his side? If what does that What does that have to do with my question? It you, has I just to do with it because it I, says I, my great. I just read. Hebrews, I just read Hebrews nine and sixteen. And uh -huh. it said, uh, for where testament is, there must also necessity be the death of the testator. You agreed Christ died for the yes, New Testament. So for Christ the New died. Testament, so we can get, so we can have access to it, brother. We how have to work we our get, way through that. How, how do we get access to it? We have to have, we have, we have to come from under, we, by coming, by the reason, the way we don't um, to, um, come under the law of sin and death. Is by the faith in Jesus Christ and still applying the law because thou shall not kill is still applicable. The law that, is still applicable. The laws that we can't wait, keep, talk about something and I'm not talking, I'm not talking about the law, I'm talking about the testament. Christ you can't said talk about the law without talking about I don't know why, hey, brother, hey, brother, as I'm sitting here. If you interrupt me again, I'm just gonna go to the next person. Brother, you interrupted me. What is I thought I you were just talking? Come I, on, did not, I did not interrupt you. But my question is not being answered. Where testament is, there must also necessity be the death of the testator. If Christ's death is for the New Testament, how is our death not for the New Testament? We, we. Did you die, bro? Do you believe in Christ? Yes. Okay. Do you believe that you died and became a new man? Oh, he took them, bring children of Israel on. He, hey, he took himself off. We didn't boot him out or nothing like that. He took himself off. Yeah, you can bring him back. Are you there, brother? Yeah, I'm here, bro. I said, do you believe that you died and became a new man? According to Romans 12 and 2, we exercise it every day, brother. When you, you died and became a new man, was that new every man? Day. Every, it's every brother, day. Brother, until brother. Okay. I, I'm answering your question, brother. It's okay, every day. Heard, okay, no problem. You say you die every day? Yes, you have to you have to mortify your members because we're not in the new code. No, 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 no. What you, you mean, don't die? Man? You don't die every day. The, the script there ain't no scripture that say we die every day. There ain't yes, no scripture you that say you're born again when, every day. When you, you don't do what the, hold on, brother. When you don't do let me, let me, stop, stop. Let me try to make it more succinct for you. Was you born again <laughs> under Christ? Yes, brother. Okay. When you was born again under Christ, was you born into the old or was you born into the new? I have to know the old in order to know what the new is, brother. That's not, I ain't asked what you have to know. D but I you do have to know it. Bring the next one. You do have to know it. I never said you didn't have to know it. I said, what was you born into when your old man died? Give me the next, give me children. Is he going to be, make sure he's audio. All right. Good. Children of Israel, I believe. Can you hear me, brother? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I, I you know, I learned from you guys, man. You know, I just had a question about the uh, Ezekiel 20 and verse 37 about the bond. In the wilderness and the bond of the covenant. Yeah, what's the bond? Like, I don't see that had taken place yet because it has not. It has not taken place. 
So, and that's what I keep trying to explain to brother. Like y'all, you bringing me to a scripture that takes place in the future, but everything in order. So I'm actually like I asked the other brothers, if you didn't, if your sins wasn't remitted by Christ, can you come under that bond of that covenant? No, you can't come under that bond, but that that bond from what I understand, like, like I said, brother, you teach me, you know, way more than me about the scriptures. I'm still learning. But when, when I see that bond, that means that's when we're going to be put under that new covenant. No. OK, so that bond during the wilderness, that's a completion because it's in the future. But if you're not if Christ didn't die for your sins, you just admit it. You can't get into that bond. Right. Correct. So did Christ die for your sins for the according to him? Was his blood for the Old Testament or the New Testament? His blood was for the for the New Testament. So if you get into that bond, you have to be already in the New Testament, right? Under his blood, right? Uh, I I kind of I guess, but I don't. I like, That's all we're saying. Like like Abraham sacrifice for you know when they you know I don't know the exact scripture. You probably know you know I definitely know you know it way better than I do, but like. When they took Isaac and was about to sacrifice him, mm -hmm. that didn't happen until to until Egypt. It was it was way well, later actually, than. Well, actually, they didn't sacrifice Isaac, but they did make a sacrifice. Well, um, it was they was about to sacrifice Isaac, but no, 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 no. Brother, just hear what I'm brother, brother, just hear, brother, hear what I'm saying. So in Genesis, um, I think you talk about Genesis twenty two when he was going to sacrifice Isaac. So he didn't sacrifice Isaac, but he went and found a ram and sacrificed the ram. And then that's when he made the promise uh, with the Lord, uh, with Abraham. But that what I'm, what I'm saying, brother, is like we didn't get underneath of that until after we got out of Egypt. So when you're talking about Egypt, right, in Exodus 2 and uh, 24, it says, and God heard their groaning and remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel and God had respect to them. So they still was under a covenant. It just didn't get completed until they came out. But they was in that covenant with Abraham. That's why God, in Exodus 2 and 24, it says, and God heard their groaning and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And then he sent Moses. Moses delivered them. And then if you want to call that the bond when it was completed, but if they wasn't under that blood, they didn't get a chance to get into that bond. So if you're not under the blood of Christ, you don't get a chance to get into that wilderness. And if Christ said his blood is for the New Testament, if Hebrews 9 says the same thing, if the scriptures clearly say, I read Romans 5, if you're justified by his blood now, you're saved from the wrath. So you can't get into that bond if you're not in it now. And nobody is in the old. You're in the new. All right, brother. I just take what you say. I I, I, I disagree with you, but I, I take you disagree. You with, hey, brother, I, when, when you go back and listen, I wish people would pay attention to what I'm saying. If you go back and listen, you're going to see that you're disagreeing with me saying that Christ said his blood was the new Testament for the remission of sins. That's what Christ said out of his mouth. If Christ don't make that statement, then maybe I might, I might believe if Hebrews don't make that statement, then maybe I might, but that does not mean that we're saying that you don't suffer something until, or things got to take place. We're not saying the scriptures don't even say that. So is, is Hebrews is, is Hebrews, just yeah, how was Shah talking, or is that somebody else talking in Hebrews? I don't know what you mean by that. Like you, you I think you from, from what I'm trying to understand is like like I said, you teaching me so right. like, I didn't know that Yahweh Shah was talking in Hebrews or who who is talking in Hebrews is the author that you know the author of he, right the author of Hebrews is talking. So I, I think I get what you're saying. So Matthew's 26, that's Christ's words. So Christ is saying that this is my blood of the New Testament. So if his blood is of the New Testament and his blood redeemed you, what is his blood redeeming you of? It's redeeming you from the punishment of your sins. That's what I thought it was. Right. But what is that blood of? It's, it's, it's the blood of a new covenant. 
Thank you. So if his blood is of the new covenant and that redeemed you, it didn't redeem you of the old cup, excuse me, into the old. It redeemed you of the New Testament. So that means Ezekiel is the false prophet then. Because Ezekiel say you're going to be brought under the bond of that covenant when you are taken into the wilderness like we was taken into the wilderness out of Egypt. That's what I understand it to be now. You teach me, you my teacher. Okay. Ezekiel cannot be a false prophet because Christ didn't say this is my blood of the New Testament and everything happens now. All he said was this is my blood of the New Testament. That's what he said, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. He didn't say nothing about Ezekiel. Y'all are joining Ezekiel because y'all can't understand something as simple as his blood redeems you from the old, puts you in the new. It's that simple. Like y'all are, and I'm, I'm fully convinced like y'all are indoctrinated with some, you ain't in the New Testament until he returns. And if you ain't in the New Testament until he returns, then you could do whatever you want. You don't have to keep the commandments then. Because you can't even keep the commandments unless Christ's blood redeemed you of the New Testament. I don't agree with that either, brother. Like, you say you can't keep the commandments unless Christ's blood redeemed you. Like, yeah, you can. Zachariah and Elizabeth, they kept the commandments without Christ's blood. So right? is, I'll give you another one. This is... um. Second Corinthians three and 14, but their minds were blinded for until this day remained the veil untaken away in the reading of the old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. So Christ took the veil away. Right. But, I ain't going to hold you up cap, man. I love you, brother. I love, I love your camp. No, but that. And uh, I, I appreciate you that. teaching me. I'm going to keep on studying and hopefully I can, you know, the most high, let me, you know, get whatever the truth is. If you're teaching yourself, you're never going to get the truth. So I, I need to join the camp? Um, You could join whatever other camp you want. Okay, thanks, brother. I appreciate you, man. Much love. You notice I said whatever other camp. Salaka. You know, you ain't have to. I don't I know why you was quiet with a side, but you ain't got to be quiet. Now. Okay, come on. You got to hey. give me time now. Hey, guys. Hey, God bless. Hey, bless you too. You say what? Um, could I, This is just conjecture because I'm learning here. Uh, this is just conjecture. Could it be that when Jesus died that he was filling a gap from the old and the new? Because when he died, he did take those souls from Abraham's bosom. So could it be that his death, because I see that people are struggling with uh, the, uh, you know, the, the covenant, the, with the new covenant. Yeah, I think they're struggling with um, needing everything fulfilled. Somebody teaching like why we still getting punished as if punishments wasn't supposed to happen just because Christ's blood remissed your sins. Um, so I know what you're saying. Like you're looking at it. I don't know if you look at it as like exile or something. Like you're not in the old, you in the new. You're not in the new. You like where Beetlejuice. Remember Beetlejuice when he was. <laughs> oh, you know, seeing Beetlejuice. I, I, or like in Zion. You know, in Zion when they be out the matrix, but they ain't get down to Zion, but they in the middle. But no, man. If Christ is your redeemer, you're in the New Testament. Now you can't go into that bond until it's completed. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. So, so the reason why the reason why I brought that up is it's not um, I'm, that I'm saying that uh, that uh, Jesus' death the, uh, he did die. We are in the new covenant now, but I'm just I'm saying just so those other brothers are thinking too that when they say the Old Testament, his blood and what he did because he was still active at when he died, he was still active. So. Could it be that that's a gap being covering of the old to the new so that it's all everybody's under the same thing? Do you understand what I'm saying? I, I have a question. Yeah. Cap, Cap, Cap brought this up before, right? In okay. Romans, the sixth chapter, it talks about how Christ died and we are resurrected with him. Are you familiar with that? Yes. So now. 
we were supposed to be put to death, but because Christ died, we're alive, correct? Correct. If he doesn't, if he didn't die, why were we supposed to be put to death? Say it again, I heard a beat. If Christ didn't die, why were we supposed to be put to death? We were supposed to be put to death because he because he hadn't died. That would that's what I'm because I mean because he hadn't died. No, is that not because we broke the old covenant and well, the wages of, and the wages of sin is death? And the wages of sin is death, and, and that's in and yes, that's in Genesis. And, so, so so we have that sentence because of the old covenant, correct? Correct. And now we have a second chance. And we get to live again because of what Christ did. So Christ died instead. And now we get to live. We get a second chance. We get resurrected with him. Correct? Correct. Is that something old or something new? That's something new. Oh, shit. No, but I'm not. Look, I'm, no, not no, no. Now, I'm saying that just for everybody. So if that's something new. Right. Then we can't be under the old if we're now able to live under something new and none of that would be possible if christ didn't die which I is agree. why he said he shed his blood for the remissions of sins which is the new testament what's I so hard with, about this i totally what's agree difficult? i totally agree with it but the, the, the reason why i'm saying it is because i'm trying to help to bridge a gap i'm not going against any of it i'm just saying that blood was shed hey brother hey brother not to cut you short but my engineer got like five minutes. We got one more person. I want. Okay, to bro, it's good. It's good. It's good. Y'all have a good. Appreciate it. All right, you have a good one. All right. Hey, so the brother we just added. Oh, uh, we got probably like five minutes exactly. So if you could be concise, but you got the floor. That's cool. Uh, good evening. <clears throat> I hope you can hear me. Yeah, we can hear you just fine. Uh, I was. I want to speak to y'all about. I want to speak to y'all about. Um, basically, like what y'all have used, I saw the title and they said something about Christianity. And I don't know if y'all consider yourselves Christian, so I want to start off and ask y'all. No, we Israelites, Israelites, and then so I know hey. you guys believe in the Lord. Boom, yeah. boom, boom, boom. Hey, brother, with all respect, I thought it was going to be on the subject, being that it's not, I do have to get my engineer up out of here, so maybe you can come back next week. Um, if he didn't have to. Get where he had to get, um, because I don't have to work tomorrow, neither does Kadaza. We could have did this a little longer, but it to what? What's later? All right, hold on. He's gonna check real quick. Hold on. Hold on, brother. Uh, we'll see if he can uh, uh hang out a little bit longer. Yeah, I'll wait. No, you can keep talking while you find out. But if you could just be concise, please. Okay, yeah, no, because it won't like, be. Can you like, if you could just get like straight to your uh, question, I would appreciate it. Okay, so my thing is that the Bible say that you know we all are in Christ as those who are baptized into the body of Christ, and the body of Christ is what's forever. The body of Christ is what was you know here in the beginning, the, like Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ. Is like three kinds, like three different concepts. You look at you look at it as like Jesus on earth is manly. You can look at it as Lord Jesus, who is our master, and Jesus. Brother, Christ. can you get me to the question? Um, so you can't consider yourself a Hebrew if you are a, a Christian. Like our title is Christian, so I think that's a misnomer. And then as far as like the I don't know what you, uh, brother, I don't know what you're talking about, brother. I just need your question. The question, okay, okay. So the question is, what's wrong with being called a Christian if the Christians, if, if, if the Bible says that that we are to be called Christians? Okay, the Bible doesn't say that we are to be called Christians. The Bible, the Bible says. Well, oh, you got to be. Don't. I didn't interrupt you, brother. I asked the you question. You did interrupt me though, because I was talking. I said, you. "What's your you?" I said, "What's your question?" You said. You want to know why we can't be called Christians if the Bible says we ought to be okay, called okay, Christians. Okay, okay, well, that was the end of the question. You're right. So you go ahead. Jesus Christ. So they will call Christians as a derogatory remark. Like if they call us niggas today 
or when they used the term black Hebrew Israelites, but they were not I, called. I, 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 I hey. disagree with that. Just remove it. Just remove it. You got this. What you got? All right, but let's go. All right. Hey, man, we got to go. I do got to get, get my engineer out of here, man. We appreciate y'all rocking with us, man. Until next week, Shalom. Tune in next week.